Okay, sorry everybody. Hey everybody, this is Silver Spook and this is the Silver Spook live stream uh, video of Alexander, 2000 years of Western propaganda. And uh, we're going to talk about East West relations, oligarchic warmongers of Greece and Rome, and 2000 years of anti Asian hate. So, uh, lots to talk about. Um, lots to talk about. But uh, yeah, first up, this is a movie, of course, that I'm referring to. If you haven't heard of this uh, show, it is called uh, Alexander from 2004. Did I not? Oops, 2004, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's a movie that is directed by uh, Oliver Stone, and it's basically it's a it's a biopic, or it's a you know, it's a movie that centers the life and the conquests of Alexander the Great. And, um, you know, so uh, I, I try to start with the lighter movie review stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's just let's look at Alexander the movie. Yeah. And so it stars Colin Farrell, Angelina, Angelina Jolie, Rosario Dawson, Anthony Hopkins, Val Kilmer, uh, Jared Leto. It's about. 20 year old movie actually at this point um and so it's a film that was a historical uh historical d d d drama epic film based on the life of ancient macedonian general and king alexander the great uh, it was directed by oliver stone starred colin farrell as alexander film's original screenplay derived in part from the book alexander the great published in 1973 by the university of oxford historian robin lane fox after release, while it performed well in Europe, the American critical reaction was negative. Uh, we're going to get to why. Uh, it grossed $167 million worldwide against a $155 million budget, thus making it a uh, commercial failure, unfortunately, for, uh, for Oliver Stone. Four versions of the film exist. The initial theatrical cut and three home video directors. Anyways, so, um, and so, uh, yeah, so this is uh, one of the covers from back in the day, but, you know, uh, I mean, you know, and obviously the topic today is going to be Western propaganda, 2000 plus years of it. And, you know, uh, <laughs> where, where do we even start? I mean, there's, there's so much to go through with this, but, uh, uh, it's important to take a, you know, wide view of things, especially when we're, um, you know, when we're, when we're dealing with such things as, you know, global geopolitics, which uh, unfortunately we have to uh, all face uh, as as a species, uh, as a as a planet, as a uh, assemblage of, you know, carbon, phosphate, and nitrogen and oxygen atoms that are moving through space and time. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, colliding with each other sometimes more than we should be, uh, cooperating. Um, but you can't really understand these things, right? Like, uh, uh, without looking at not just the last 20 years of, you know, Western propaganda and not just the news, uh, obviously on these YouTube videos, I center on cinematic storytelling uh, and storytelling, I would uh, one one thing that I sometimes bring up is that storytelling itself, story is entertainment, right? And, you know, uh, you know, telling telling riveting tales of the hunt or the war or you know the ghost or the monster around the campfire is the thing that humans have done for you know a long long time certainly, uh, and uh, it's natural thing to do, but story like everything else right movies just just storytelling like just talking to your friends about story uh history is storytelling narratives right these are these are uh they're they're part of the human experience they're like a natural thing that people do they talk about the parties that we had and the the lives that we've had you know it's part of what makes life more bearable interesting fun uh, worth living, but story, right. Which is basically like taking past events and then, 
um, taking taking the you know at least what we you know well I mean <laughs> I don't want to get into I, I did I did a quantum quantum uh, science quantum mechanics stream last week so I don't want to go too deep in that this early in the morning but you know when we take the past and we recontextualize it right we take the past and then we uh, bring it into the present right. Um, it's a thing that we do, right? And, and, and then we relive things that have happened or we relive, we, we re-experience things um, or re-experience something based on what we think is the past, right? Um, and even when we're, even when we're experiencing the future with science fiction, I would argue, we're, we're still experiencing the past or what we think is the past. We're experiencing what we think is reality. We can only see things through our own experiences in that sense, right? Um, but but what what but the thing with the thing with story and the thing with narrative, right? Which, what is the word propaganda? I mean, it's hard to. What do words mean in English, right? That's that's a long silver spook cone, long long. That's one of me, one of my silver spook, uh, gold plated, uh, gold plated um, silver spook coinages. What even is Western language? But when you talk about propaganda, um. You can't really talk about propaganda without examining what even is history, what even is story, what even is narrative, right? What, what you know, what, without language itself, right? Because one entity's propaganda is another entity's uh, history or another entity's uh, just facts. It's another entity. One organization's propaganda, one country's propaganda is another uh, uh, country's... Um, just common sense, consensus reality. And it's usually, there's a certain group of countries that, that tend to be the ones to putting this stuff out. Um, and so, but, but, you know, I mean, but it's like when, when, when you, when you tell a story of any kind, right, whether that's the story of the ancient Greeks, right, the story of the ancient Romans, the story of Europe itself, the story of the British, the French, the Spanish, the story of the you know the mercantile era i would actually argue the story of capitalism and the story of colonialism are are, are two different stories the story of the last 500 years uh there's one story of liberalism and and capitalism one, one, there's one story of progress and modern uh, uh, and and modernization that's one story. And then there's a story of capitalism from a Marx, more Marxian Western left perspective. And then there's a story of colonialism. That's another perspective, right? And um, I would argue that the, I mean, ultimately, you know, these are different experiences that different people had, but of, of the same time period, right? Um, but from the perspective of the wealthy upper class Brit from 1800s, this, this, the, the narrative of enlightenment and modernization, um, they, they certainly are act, like just historically inaccurate and counterfactual and certainly are propaganda, right? The story of the, the uh, but even the story of the Marxist analysis, uh, which is, which, I mean, dialectical thinking is one thing. But specifically, the analysis of the transitions and the, the not really Marx, I would say the progressive, what was sometimes referred to as left. And there's a there's a variety of people in this camp. Hegel, Marx, they, they constructed the narrative of the progress from uh, slavery, tribalism, feudalism, capitalism in the 1800s, and then this potential future utopian communism, right? And that, but that, and that is a narrative, the pro, the so-called progressive narrative. Horace Greeley was one of these people that was Marx's boss, uh, and that for that progressive narrative, is itself a kind of propaganda because it left out, right? It it, it was a it was a Eurocentric, it was a Western narrative still, the Western left narrative, I would argue, or the Western left narrative, let's say, because it left out the indigenous people of Turtle Island or the Americas. Right? It left out, it didn't ask the Africans what their experience was. It didn't ask Asia, right? Speaking of East-West relations, the, the, the Marxist 
anarchist communist the western anarchist communist socialist um progressive uh all 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 branches i mean the the conservative the uh you know the the liberal of that time not the not the not the liberal in 2020 but the liberal of the 1800s 1700s uh had their narrative uh there was the you know just the, the uh the you know the upper class elite there was a and then there was the left narrative that was um or the left narrative as i often like to say or what i don't know what left even means in english what do what do words mean left means bosh i guess that left left means back in color revolutions left left means anti-asian hate and western propaganda in the west i don't know what words mean but um you know, the, 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 but but the but the but the narrative of the working classes of Europe, uh, and many of them that were the thought leaders were not necessarily working classes. I would argue, in fact, but they like to like write things that were very rousing to a lot of people who wanted to see themselves as working class. I would even argue, but it actually weren't. They were they were people who were desiring to go back to a pre a previous time that was better. Or they were designed to go forward to a time that would ostensibly be better, um, uh, in their own heads, right? But but leaving out the experiences of the Asians in the Opium Wars, leaving out the experience of Africans in enslavement and mass plunder, right? Leaving out the indigenous people of Turtle Island and the genocide, mass plunder, etc., right? And so that, that so the Western, all Western narratives in one sense are ultimately propaganda because none of them with like absolutely basically only narratives that ever really come out of the West that aren't propaganda are the ones where people that have left and have basically gone native somewhere else or have tried to uh, dismantle their internal Westernness and then speak back to it because everything that all the stories, right. That are told that take hold, in the in Europe, in in Euro settler colonies like the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, and the countries that affiliate with what the West, even like like Japan, which is like a country that's in what's called the East or what's what what the what the ancient Greeks called right. Uh, the, the Orient was a we just meant you know like the the place where the sun rises right, and the West right, uh, like the Phoenicians uh, had a word, um, uh, you know. Uh, that you know the, the occident right the greeks the phoenicians the Romans, they all had a word, the, the place where the sun goes down that's the west uh, of the of the of the greatest landmass eurasia right and so and so uh, the stories that have come out though uh unfortunately they 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 the, the ones that take hold and i and so my point is that like you know story is 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 entertaining and so like when we tell stories like i tell stories like neo feud right in a video game when we watch i don't know black panther or when we read a book you know when you read any book right when you read uh you know um when you read well don't read too much jk rowling and turf bullshit but you know <laughs> when you read your uh uh i don't even know what the comic books you know like just some child's book you read an aesop's fable you read the st story of pele and her sisters you know you're being entertained like hawaiians had stories we had stories right the native uh, Anishinaabe had their own stories. The story of uh, 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 Raven and the story of Crow, right? And, and the, the, the trickster animals. The, Maui was a trickster demigod, right? Fishing the islands out of the sea. And these stories, they serve as entertainment. They serve as uh, ways to unify people culturally, right? They serve as, as, as uh, uh, giving people roots and giving people place in the world, right? Uh, and uh, and stories are not story it's also very important because stories and storytelling it's not just um when you listening to uh your dad tell a story or watching a movie or reading a book it, the story is constantly reinforced and repropagated and reified echoed visually cinematically uh and in 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 uh, multi multiplayer massively online multiplayer games reinforced like alexander is reinforced i mean I, i'm going to get to the tale of Anne alexander which is the tale of the Western exceptional uh, civilization that has to uh, conquer and 
bring the civilize the rest of the world asia in that time obviously africa asia pacific and any new world that might come about has to be civilized or westernized right and so that story is reified when you play call of duty and you or you play a massively online game a battlefield and you go to a asian country a african country and you're in you know you know 10 1040p high definition you know, mass slaughtering people. You're 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 reifying that story of the great conquests, right? Even though you're not necessarily hearing, you're not you're not you know you're not like beginning, middle, and end, uh, watching the story happen. You are you are still experiencing that narrative and that worldview, right? Um, and so, um, so the the the, the storytelling, right? I would argue. I mean, if you look at what is propaganda, you're gonna let's just let's just let's just play the game of looking into the dictionaries of the the, the upper annals of our Western overlord. I'm sorry, uh, civilizing uh, 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 countries. Propaganda, information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to pro promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. He was charged with distributing any propaganda. A committee of cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church responsible for foreign missions founded in 1622. So again, so the Holy Roman Catholic Church, as descended from the Holy Roman Empire, as descended from the Roman Empire, as descended from the Greek Empire, right? The, the successor. Um, its job, right? The Holy Roman Catholic Church uh, had branches, right? Had committees. Right, had entire legions who were responsible uh, for going out and uh, and propagating right their narrative and their story to them to to their own people so that, to enlist into you know crusades inquisitions uh, 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 missionary right missionary um, work which is the first the the phalanx right in it, to put it in greek terms the missionary is the phalanx assault that which behind it comes the full colonial uh genocide enslavement massacre and then plunder etc for centuries that's the colonial era so propaganda is is uh uh i mean it's sometimes there uh, there is admittance of what you know propaganda from the latin congregatio congregatio de propaganda fide congregation of the propagation of the faith um, and so, um, so, but propaganda, uh, is a story. It's still a story, right? And, and, and so the story of Jesus Christ, our Lord and savior, right? The story of, uh, the, the, the Christian narrative itself, right? I mean, literally the Bible, right? Which accumulation of, uh, uh, uh large amounts of, they're, they're basically a large amount of accumulation of story that are then put in, like created into a monotheistic imperial religion, right? The or the Holy Roman Empire, right? It was actually the, the and I, I like to bring up the fact that the the religious story, the G, the, the the story of Jesus and the story of the Bible, the 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 story of the people that predated the Christians is the Jews, and the Jews themselves were a people that were subjugated, right? Like the Africans. Asians and indigenous people of the last 500 years under the the colonial era today the story of Jesus is a story of a basically the equivalent of a black african person or an afro asiatic per literally it was an afro asiatic person a non western person a non greek a non roman person right that's why in the bible there's uh the Le the romans are constantly present because the Romans were subjugating Jewish people, among others, as part of their empire, right? As part of their conquest. And so the story of the Bible is actually the story of resistance to empire uh, that was then uh, later co-opted, right? Converted and then re-weaponized. And it, it, the, 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 in, to another way to put it in the context of this stream and this video is that the, the power of the West has never necessarily been greater technological uh, prowess, greater um, uh, efficiency through their organization. Their culture is not necessarily better attuned to 
mitigating disease, as we see with the COVID numbers and also the entire history of biological warfare, smallpox, etc., the Black Plague. Western culture is not better at really, um, I would argue, not much of anything, not making sure the correct science c comes to the forefront, not even good at science, period, I would argue. Capitalism is not conducive to uh, actually rationally and empirically investigating the world. And uh, there has never not been a capitalist Western re reality dominant. So, uh, among other things, right, the, the, the religious, the, 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 the Christian uh, uh, non-natural uh, uh, divine metaphysical faith of Christian Western, which is Western religion, is itself antithetical to science, uh, uh, ethical, win-win um, cooperative uh, economics or social interaction. Right. That's 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 the Protestant and Catholic wars. That's the that's the infinite wars fought internally to Europe for how many centuries. Um, and so. So uh, the Western. Um, uh, the Western exceptionalism, if there is one. Right. So the Western. What is the West better at? Right. What What is what is the West is not necessarily it's not like everybody is terrible. Right. It's not like people are the, the, the people that are born uh, who happen to have Greco-Roman, uh, British, Spanish, Ital uh, well, Italian is Roman, uh, British, Spanish, you know, Austrian, you know, or so-called American, which is just Anglo-Saxon DNA uh, in their uh, uh, in their in the so flowing through their veins. It doesn't make them bad just because they're born. No, but it's like the cultures and the the the. The, the cultures, the systems, the, 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 the life ways, the things that have been passed down um, through transmission and through uh, the education system and just living in and interacting with being in the family of going to the school in a, in a, in a Western um, uh, country, civilization world. It, it, you're, you're going to you're going to have these things inside of you. You're going to I mean, it have they're inside of me because they are be, they are being propagated because I do what I went to an American school. And so um, and so what is the West better at? Right. What 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 is the West actually excel at? And actually, the, the, the story of Jesus is actually a very good story because the story of Jesus is a story of how. And one thing I'll argue is that you know they, they they are the best at mass disinformation, mass lying, or or mass another word for that is mass propaganda, mass violence, like massive scale violence, uh, and uh, as Mike Pompeo said, he's the former director of the Central Intelligence Agency or one of the ruling, uh, one of the ruling positions, one of the, the highest positions of the current dominant. Alexander scale. I mean, the current the current Alexand Alexandrian country, the superpower of the United States. Mike Pompeo said, "We lied, we cheated, we stole, we had entire training programs." So killing, lying, uh, cheating, which is goes goes in part with the lying, stealing. Uh, you know, whether whether through whether through capitalist accumulation or through colonial imperial plunder. But I mean, e either way, it amounts to the same thing. Basically, just being terrible. I mean, it's I mean, it, it's hard to really put it any other than that. But it's basically like being able to, uh, and the the, 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 the the disinformation part, the lying part is possibly the most important of all of them, right? Cheating, stealing, killing, right? Mass murder, mass killing, right? Whether through chemical warfare, hydrogen bombs, uh, you know, stolen Chinese firework powder that you turn into gun. The killing part is important. So like U.S. military supremacy in the current um, so-called Cold War 2.0 that's rapidly heating up, especially with, you know, we're going to get to the present present day uh, in, in a bit. But what's happening in Japan, South Korea and Taiwan, etc. Uh, that military supremacy which is basically military it's not really supremacy but emphasis and expenditure and it's really the it's really the capacity to be so barbaric and ruthless but what does the word barbaric mean interesting word <laughs> what does that even mean again i can't start to use western words because they're so good at lying 
every Western word has completely incoherent meanings if you accurately look at history. Because the word barbarian is often applied to the least barbaric people who are being barbarized by the most barbaric, who is the West. It's the, so the projection, right, is another... I mean, like, when, when, when Asians that are trying to tell the truth, like my friend Carl Ja, is so, they all, it, you have to constantly use the word projection. Western... The West, the United States, is projecting its crimes onto China, Russia, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is accurate because... Um, you know that 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 you know that it's 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 right. It's kind of like this thing, but it, it, where you if you're constantly weaponizing storytelling, or if you're constantly lying, right? As I said, the disinformation part is the most important part, right? The disinformation, uh, convincing mass numbers of people, right? Be them the working class, the colonial military class, right? Uh, it's all the people, right? The people that do the, the people do the work. I mean, that, that part of the Marxist analysis is correct, which is that the the from a class anal analyst perspective, the masses of people are doing the actual work, whether that's uh, mental work, that's physical work, the butchers, bakers, the candlestick makers, the people that are taking the uh, inventing the technology, deploying technology, engineering, um, you know, uh, 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 keeping the trains running. You know, uh, building the train, the people that are doing all of the work, they are um, the the elite don't have much, right? They don't produce anything. They're parasitic. The the, the oligarchic slash feudal slash imperialist slash colonial slash generally cis white straight guy elites that have always run the West. Those people are a tiny one percent or less, right? The the one percent and the ninety nine percent to quote David Graeber. Um, and so that's, it is accurate to say that like, you know, there is a tiny percentage of people that are benefiting from the exploitation, right. Of the masses of the people and, uh, uh, the exploitation of the labor value of the people outside the West is magnitudes higher than the exploitation of the labor of the people inside. That's, that's the part that's missed by the Western left or doesn't want to be touched on for whatever reason, um, generally, but but the thing and so that is correct but the thing and the most important part of that right is the ability to um to control the population and to control the population uh ultimately it requires the people to be disinformed to be diseducated right because if they ever found out that oh my goodness you mean we're actually being mass exploited they would want to undo and overturn such a system right and the thing is, there are there are there are human civilizations that have existed right out without ubiquitous disinformation and diseducation and and propaganda, right? I mean, and not just propaganda inside of their own societies, like capitalist propaganda. Those are societies that are that that lived in not per, not like not to say that zero people ever lied, right? Like. Oh, um, of course I did the poi pounding today. Yes, I just uh, accidentally spilled it and the dog ate it. I mean, native, so obviously one example of a society that didn't live in perpetual disinformation to benefit a tiny minority of people, right? And to the, to the suffering, death, and exploitation of the masses of people, and even more so the people that are not of that, of the, of the, the capitalist oligarchic imperial native group right so the, the colonies are the most exploited but inside the metropole or inside of the countries capitalist disinform disinform disinformed countries you're going to have also people that are going to be mistreated and exploited and so not, not to say every native hawaiian never um lied about doing play ponding or no native Hawaiian ever transgressed another, or even there was no violence, which is not, that's not true. Not to say that every native Hawaiian, um, Kanaka Maoli, you know, uh, we didn't uh, tell a story that was not 100% accurate. You know, there, there were there were stories that were entertaining and the story of Pele uh, chasing the, uh, the selfish pig-headed men uh, down the mountainside and then incinerating them and turning them into charred man-shaped, uh, statues 
uh, 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 of, 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 of roasted chauvinism. Um, it's, it's a story of Pele, like literally uh, burning to death all these men. Pele is a volcano goddess in Hawaii. And that, that story, you know, that's like, you know, that's a tall tale, right? <laughs> that's not, I mean, it's not like, I don't think, I think, I don't think most Hawaiians, I mean, wh whether Hawaiians like 100% believe that that was literature or not, um, you know, it's a, it's a story that's about illustrating number one, it, cause stories are doing many things, right? they number one, they are, they're, they are entertaining and it's an entertaining story. You know, it's got drama. It's got, it's got spicy romantic, you know, uh, cause, uh, uh you know, Pele doesn't want to, um, like Pe 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 Pele is a very fiery character who has had many trysts and then bad breakups. It's a very, it's a very, uh, it's not, I don't want to say it's a soap opera, but you know, it's like Pele has a very tumultuous love life. It's very uh, engaging narrative wise in that sense. But then it's also the story is not just about entertainment, right? And it's, there's action. It's like an action movie, you know, you know, Pele stamped her foot um, uh, and the earth shook and spasm. And from Kilauea's crater came fire, brimstone and power clasm and roaring rivers and burning rocks and you know flaming streaming lava and all the chuds were incinerated to uh you know uh ch charred oblivion and so like this that, that that's that's like action movie that's like think of like think of alexander that's like the big war scene that's like you know think of think of um you know some di random disaster movie right so like the stories are there to captivate the mind keep you entertained as you're eating food and you're just hanging, you're just, you're just hanging and chilling with your friends. It's like watching people watch Netflix, right? People, people do, you know, people do this. People just talk to each other and they tell stories. And so Hawaiians, so stories are entertainment, but the story is also like a story of Pele. It's not just entertainment. It's, just, it's, it's science and it's, it's public health. If you go too close to the volcano, you can die. You can be hurt. You can die. And guess what? Most native Hawaiian, Hawaiians, zero native Hawaiians were injured when Kilauea erupted and destroyed 2,700 uh, or about over 2,000 homes and businesses and structures uh, five years ago. Right, this year Mauna Loa also erupted, but actually, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, the volcanoes are erupting here constantly. But no, no native Hawaiians were actually injured. No, no, no Kanaka Maoli and people of Hawaii were actually that were uh, of Hawaii. You know, were actually burned, incinerated, charred, killed because why? Because Hawaiians know right. And some of that is through the stories of Pele, but now we have new new stories that also we talk about Pele, and I have songs about Pele that talk about why you should not go near the volcano, right? And some of them are entertaining, but it's kind of like wh whether you believe it or not. A five year old, a six year old will hear that story and be like, "Oh, I probably should not uh, frustrate, annoy, don't take rocks from that mountain." But, but don't, don't take rocks from the mountain. It's also about like don't unnecessarily disturb the environment and the land. Because the land is, which which ties into the greater Native Hawaiian story, which is the land is your mother, right? And we are descended from the land, and we have to coexist and cooperate with the land, and treat the land as like a like a relative, and the other animals and plants should be treated as uh, in part of a web, as part of an ecological relational uh, uh, story of the world, right? That's the that's the that's the, the conscious the Hawaiian consciousness and story and worldview. Uh, is, is 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 very different from a Western uh, story and narrative, right? And so that and but the stories, so the stories are entertainment, they're science, they are uh, in, in indigenous societies, right? And indeed, in in many societies, it was also like that. Um, the differentiation was not that that is in modern times, which I mean it includes in Hawaiian modern times as well. Uh, the differentiation was not as. Uh, uh, it, there, there wasn't really that much differentiation, including in, in Asia, in China. There's stories that were educational and they were mythological and then they were cultural. And then they were also, but they're also scientific and they're also like uh, 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 systems of morality and, uh, and, 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 and sometimes legal codes. But like the kapu system itself in Hawaii was, was part of that system of, of uh, rules that you would follow and not, not arbitrary, right? Um, or at least, at least no, the rules are not always perfect, but the rules were there for for reason. Like, for example, don't don't take more than you need is a rule because if people take more than they need, well, 
look what look 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 at all the starving homeless people in the west in the united states right look at the look at the planet dying right look at environments collapsing right i mean these examples at this point in time in 2023 should be obvious to people even in the west i hope we would hope one would hope and so but the problem, the reason why they're not immediately obvious, I think a lot of time, is because of the propaganda, which I, I should come back to the main topic. Um, uh, also, what's up, Stern Sam? Um, so the the so story story is always there, right? And telling these uh, great, um, you know, telling stories, and you know, when you're talking about your own people, right? You 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 know, and your own family and your own side, pe- people naturally are going to want to make themselves and their families and their cultures, their countries, the heroes, the good guys in stories. It's the natural thing to want to do. And not everybody 100% agrees with, with, with the, the, you know, with the, with the different side. That's why like when you have a, when you have a legal process in a court, by the way, the, the, the modern justice system is based on a non-Western system. The Chinese actually had the, the first actual courts, uh, from, uh, concept I, I could go I have, I have an entire stream that's just about the legal system that the west never had um but in courts you have two different stories the defendant and the prosecutor right you have the you have the you have the, uh, the attacking and the defending side right um we have two different sides and one side has one narrative and they says like you did you killed my husband you stole my car you embezzled the funds well they don't do that they don't. They don't actually prosecute the real criminals that are the ruling class capitalist oligarchs of the West. In the West, uh, they do that in China, by the way. They, Fifteen billions in have, have lost their heads, and they don't. That's why. That's why Western capitalists are afraid to go, and they are all running away from China. But anyways, they're running away from the East, right? But that's you know. But but so. But in law, it's a good example where you have one side is telling a narrative, constructing a case, is storytelling, right? That's like. You know, um, well, that black boy, well, he's black, number one. That's that's Western law. He's black. Can't you see? He's a criminal. Based on racist, it's just the, this, the narrative of racism that predated that court case. Like a 2020 court case of, uh, you know, uh, J- Jamal versus the uh, uh, white a man in Minneapolis or Cincinnati or wherever it is, right? The black child... Or the black, you know, fifteen-year-old, or the black twenty-year-old, versus the white society—they're already at the, their back is against the wall because of the racism story. That's part of the colonial story, and so then automatically one side is going to pin that, is going to is going to drive that home uh, to the generally all-white juries, and that's why critical race theory was banned in the U.S. schools uh, because it it, it 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 acknowledges one of the one of the one of the fictional fraudulent. Um, components, the facets of the Western propaganda or Western storytelling, which is that people of dark skin color, wide noses, and curly textured hair are fundamentally lesser, more inclined to criminal behavior, degenerate, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, deserve to be slaves, and or we we feel sad for them, but the the but but it's their fault that they're underdeveloped, and we can white savior them by giving them aid or something right but either both of those both of those those are two different stories right that were retold so but in so in court you have that story and then but then you also have then the, the lawyer constructs a narrative it's very important western court system is about constructing narrative and constructing story that is uh generally uh it's actually it's it is it is it is always based upon manipulation and lying um through numbers and through statistics and through uh facts and selective use of facts because that that's the way that all stories actually function um which is that um when you tell a story right you can't give an absolute 100 percent uh accurate recording of all facts in history there's not enough time to do that nobody has access to that even if you even if somehow we had you know a quite a quintillion cameras cctv micro drones nano drones swarming every inch of the planet like dna dna microscopic crawlers like the the dust nanobots in um keanu reeves's 
the day the earth stood still where every inch of everything is just constantly being noted and surveilled every inch of the planet is just being watched right every action that anyone ever takes is being watched nobody has act number one we can't do that right even with the levels of panopticon that the west is rolling out that it, it's projecting onto china speaking of storytelling we don't we can't do that number two even if we had access to that level of story uh, of 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 uh, even if we had access to that level of information there's not enough time right to tell the story of every ro- of every person and every rock and every per like um is the u.s human violating human is the u.s a good country right it, there's not really enough time to go through every single case case by case by case by case because okay how many people that you know what what, what did three what is 330 million americans doing in the last you know two years we can't no we can't we don't have access to that right so we have to look at like arcs of history we have to try to draw out the 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 most salient aspects right and then you have to construct story right but the thing is people we have to construct stories that and stories can only be consumed one person one experience here at a time right you can only listen to one i mean maybe you can listen to three silver spook streams at one time and also uh, consume an indigenous podcast while learning uh, while learning um, you know superposition and quantum mechanics with your third ear. But I can't do that. I don't know. Maybe you have uh, a, a advanced uh, alien mind uh, designed by somebody smarter than Elon Musk because he couldn't design his way out of a, a, a living room. But anyways, so uh, I gotta get at least one jab in at these clowns, right? But um, in the in the stream, uh, I'm already half an hour in at least. When you're telling stories, you have to you have to choose the facts of of a, of a, of of a nearly infinite number of facts. You have to choose one of them, or or ten or a hundred. But that's still it's it's, it's you know you cannot tell everything. You have to se- select what uh, uh, times to focus on, right? You have to select what uh, angles of the camera, right? That's why cinema is actually very good. It's a very good metaphor for all story, right? Because if you have a camera angle, right, like that, that picture of the, the meme with the boy with the boot on his head, right? Uh, you know this one, right? There's the meme with, 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 if you look at the first image, right? If you just look at the first image, right? If you just look at that, it's like, oh my God, terrible, abusive police violence, probably in Xinjiang, right? <laughs> Crimes against humanity, human rights violations against this poor Asian child by the Chinese government, or you know, um, who who does the U.S. want to overthrow? Uh, you know, um, oh, the poor Russian child. We have to get Vladimir Putin's, um, you know, Nazi boot off of his head. Never mind. <laughs> Again, storytelling, right? Never mind the fact that who's the number one fighter of Nazis, the Russians. But anyways, okay, let's. So, but if you if you if you put the camera there. The story is what, right? Alfred Hitchcock literally did this because Alfred Hitchcock was being weaponized and his tools were being weaponized and used by the U.S. and the U.K. and NATO uh, to to tell stories about how communism was bad, right? But Alfred Hitchcock talked about like if you if you have a shot of a woman screaming, right, uh, and then it, and then and then that that says one thing. Oh, I don't know. If you have a a a picture of a knife with a hand holding a knife and then the woman screaming. Then it's oh no she's about to be murdered right? If you have a picture a, a, a clip of a a, a a mouse running along the floor and then she screams it's like oh he just freaked out because it was a mouse right? And then and then if it's like you know uh, so e- e- depending on the the way that you arrange the same images and the order you arrange the images right? If you have a woman screaming and then you show her hand holding the knife then that means she's about to murder someone right? So then so then the way what you show the, how you show it, the angle of what you show determines the story, and 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 everyone is constant. Not just the director of a movie, not just the not 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 just the uh, motion, not just the motion uh, picture association for the preservation of American values, headed by anti-communist Ayn Rand, backed by the U.S. government and ruling class that wrote every Hollywood movie <laughs> to make sure it was anti-communist, anti-Asian. Right in the in the post World War Two era, but everyone is constantly selecting what details to 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 to, to what what scenes, what details, 
what characters and when and how to present them at all times, even right now when I'm telling you this, right? Um, and so and, and my, so the point of this is if you look at that picture, it's like, oh my God, human rights violation. And then you look at the picture number two and you notice, oh my goodness, that was just a kid putting a boot on his head to be silly, right? But this is, this is what ASPI, this is what Adrian Zenz, the US uh, federal government NED do uh, on a regular basis, taking pictures of a playground with a child in uh, Xinjiang or a child in, you know, uh, uh, you know, somewhere in, I don't know, Ukraine or wherever they need to start wars for, well, again, propaganda, war propaganda. They take a child holding the bars, crying because mommy didn't give him the lollipop or something, or the child just behind the bars, looking out the bars, right? With a beautiful slide and a playground and fresh water and a, a grass that's greener than any American school with, with, with no COVID. By the way, the Chinese have back to pre-COVID levels of, uh, of, 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 of uh, hospital and clinical uh, appointments and stays. So you have a child um, that's like looking out of a bars. And if you just show the child looking out the bars, it could be children mass imprisoned by evil Asians, we have to stop them, right? Oh my God, uh, you know, poor Uyghur children uh, having IUDs forcefully inserted. That's actually what Canada does to indigenous children, but then they project that at China with the help of you know the, the, the State Department and uh, the, the oligarch warmongers that run the US and the Western world and G7 and NATO and Brussels and UK. So, that's all storytelling, though. You see, that's all. That's all narrative construction. Um, selecting which and how, wh which, which. So sometimes it's historical facts. The thing is, you could just completely make up facts. You could just make up. You could. That, that's what cinema is, right? That's why Hollywood has the best movies, the most entertaining movies, the most watched movies. Well, they had. They're 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 not, they're falling behind. But the West has always had some of the most engaging narratives because engaging stories are necessary to do the to to maintain the most nightmarish barbaric but profitable systems that the human species has ever constructed right it's called capitalism imperialism barbarism uh uh, uh just win lose ways that, that, that everything we're always talking about genocide every all think of all the worst things you can imagine slavery Racism, um, uh, uh, what the, what the, just, you know, I don't have to recite that because I've already touched on a lot of them, right? But all those systems have to be maintained through storytelling, through weaponized storytelling, right? So I, I was saying earlier was that everybody, um, everybody consumes stories and we really, we, we do that whether we like it or not, you know, uh, we, we're going to do that. We're, people get bored and they're going to watch Netflix. You know, people get bored. They're going to watch Alexander. I'm not, I'm not, I, I mean, uh, I want to say first, Alexander is not the worst. This the movie is actually one of the least bad as far as propaganda goes. This specific movie, I'm just choosing this because I needed a thumbnail. Three hundred is uh, nightmarishly bad in the sense of its terrible war propaganda that literally got the reigning Western Empire, the United States and its allies, to kill millions of Muslims in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria. And displaced 37 million plus, caused massive damage, and li literal the most horrific evils and crimes against humanity have been perpetuated by Western storytelling, like movies like 300. And I mean, I mean, we can't leave Alexander out of it ultimately, because this is the, Alexander. The story of Alexander the Great is itself Western propaganda, and Alexander the Great himself used anti-Asian hate, anti-Asian propaganda of despotism. And 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 the and the, the fallen hordes and the degeneracy and their 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 barbarism to justify doing barbarity again, projecting, right? Because Greece was a capitalist. I'm going to get into the receipts specifically of Greece's uh, unethical slave owning capitalist oligarchy, and actually most Asian countries were more civilized than Greece. And so, but but like the U.S. is. A slave owning two and a half million disproportionately black prison slaves, by the way, making NVIDIA headsets uh, and chipsets, making uh, Lockheed Martin products and answering their phones for Intel, 
constructing all the furniture for the uh, White House and the Oval Office's furniture. It's all made by black slaves, paid 25 to 35 cents per hour, under arrested under false pretenses in Washington, D.C., by the way. So this fun fun fact for you. Uh, so the U.S. still has slaves, has an oligarchy, is the number one colonial planetary suffering planet ecology annihilating entity that backs global capitalism with the largest military industrial complex has committed all the most heinous multi-million person genocides the world has ever seen um in the last century at least in the last in the last two decades and in the last century it's been it, it's engaged in uh wars in almost every part of the world and the u.s has to project like like ancient greece did the u.s had to project its crimes into the east right it projected it everywhere, but especially the East. Why the East? Uh, because Asia is number one. The majority of the planet's, uh, the majority of the planet's population, sixty percent resides and has always resided in Asia. It's the majority of the world. Number two, it's the it's the most critical landmass. What Mackinder and Trilateral Commission founder and the chief strategist for the U.S. superpower, Zbigniew Brzezinski called. Uh, the 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 heartland or the grand chessboard upon which control of the world primacy is decided. So Asia Asia is very important in the world, um, and it has some of the most, especially East Asia, has some of the most advanced non disinformation, non weaponized propaganda based societies that the world has ever seen, including China, which is. That's why China is the number one enemy of the United States, right? Um, it it is really it, it is really uh, it was not inevitable, but it is the trajectory of the history of the world and the history of the uh, the history of uh, not just humanity, but it's the history of all of uh, the people of the world, the Kanaka, Moana, uh, and all of the the Aina. And the descendants. I still have to speak in Hawaiian words because I start to say these things in Western words. But the 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 uh, the 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 Aina that has manifested the its descendants right have manifested um, an unhealed and a more healed great civilization. And one of them is a great uh, a great barbarian horde, and the one is a great civilization. And then these two uh, are, are are standing off, unfortunately, against each other. The U.S. and China, or well, the U.S. and all of its allies, and China and the multipolar world are facing off against each other. Communism and capitalism, or social non non capitalist uh, attempts to build communism, which is what the native wine said. Uh, and then you have Westernism, capitalism, imperialism, racism, and on the other hand, you have multipolarity, uh, acceptance of difference, win lose. Uh, you know, uh, Belt and Road initiatives and a uh, coexistence, you know, and peace. I mean, you, you can't, you can't have a society that is filled with and worshiping war that has the biggest military expenditures, right. And is constantly aggressing and trying to start and foment wars, not just the United States, but all of its allies, the European union, et cetera. Uh, and, and you, you cannot be constantly doing that and claim yourself to want peace and quote unquote stability, right? Security. That's the word they use. Security is an interesting word. It's a very good storytelling. Speaking of Western storytelling, because security is a word that you can, you can say we were just, tr we were just trying to sec have security for ourselves, right? But what security means ultimately, it doesn't mean security, right? Cause nobody is secure in America, right? Financial insecurity has never been higher in the United States uh, than now, right? So the the the, the instability of the world uh, that could be annihilated through nuclear war, non-nuclear war, uh, you know, climate annihilation, you know, m increased disease propagation, etc. It's never been higher. So the concept the concept of security is uh, again it's a not like like every every Western word is bathed in the blood of billions of people over millennia and it is uh it is been contorted by the forked snake tongues of billions of westerners that have misused that word so every word has basically at least two if not more 
meanings and the most known the most used meaning is the, is the one that's divorced from reality so security what does that mean security means you have to be subjugated to us security means insecurity for everyone devolution collapse global ecological collapse infinite war infinite poverty infinite escalation because the capitalism cannot continue capitalism is westernism i would argue the west is capitalism so the idea that that's the problem with marx is that the project of europe itself if he was looking more accurately he would have seen that the colonial imperial project is inherent to the concept of uh it, it, it predated right the thing that he was analyzing in london with the and the, even the serfs moving off of the line the thing that the, the force that was that was doing that in fact was something that that, that was in it, that was beneath all of that which is the win lose way the disinformational uh, uh, method the the fact that feudal and capitalist oligarchies 95% of the same people who are feudal lords in britain people that make up the executive ceo cfo and ctos of your uh your big british companies you know your tescos your bps your exxon mobiles your um the the the, the british uh, uh car companies executives the wealthy are also feudal lords and they're either ex -feudal, a lot of them they still are feudal lords they just hide the feudal part so anyway so my point and you know that's a that's a deeper longer point which is that uh if you if you if you if you are uh in so if you if you need to be constantly lying to the masses right you need them to believe things that will hurt their interests right liberals american democrats will look at their own version of who the stupid redneck country bumpkins are in i don't know south carolina and make fun of them because of their accent um and or georgia or, or wherever and they'll say those people are acting against their own interests because they're being lied to by the republican party right and so it's like so they have it's it, they're kind of like they're kind of like western leftists which are going like these people are not acting in their own interest because you know they're not like you know, we 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 need to stop talking about class and just get a union, and and then that'll be the end, right? It's a band aid on cancer, right? But also like people, in the same way that Republican, like the the red state Republican learning, oh, I was lied to by, you know, uh, Marco Rubio. Oh my goodness, now I will join the Democratic Party. Right? It's like band aid on cancer. Is it you? Have, you got there. There are stories that are like uh, they they are like matryoshka egg. I, I'm, that's not fair to the Russians, right? They're like imagine a a a uh, a, a thousand eggs. Imagine imagine like a giant eagle's egg, birthed out by an Aquila, the Roman insignia. Uh, imagine like a giant eagle birthing a giant red, white, and blue egg. And inside that is another red, white, and blue egg. And inside that is another egg and another egg. And imagine a thousand concentric eggs, right? And each one of those eggs is a story, right? That is keeping you trapped in the star-spangled Roman, also known as the United States, the, the star-spangled Greek worldview. Every time you break out of one egg, there's always another egg to hold you. And, it, and the West is constantly encapsulating the external concentric circles. Like a, it's like a Dyson sphere. Uh, or like a like a like imagine one of those uh models of the solar system right with all these concentric circles right imagine the 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 spinning the imagine the spinning rings in contact right with jody uh foster i'm sorry i give you too many metaphors at once but you know imagine there's all these concentric rings every time you break out of one narrative there's another narrative to hold you in place oh i see the republicans are bad i'm going to vote democrat that can hold you for 20 years you, after 20 years, you could be voting Republican, and then you go, okay, I'm going to vote Democrat. But you're still in the narrative that there's any hope for change in the United States, right? And 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 then you go, oh, my God, the Democrats, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Democrats and Republicans have irreconcilable problems. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to vote for a, um, a, a progressive, radical change maker like, I don't know, Donald Trump or 
uh, you know, back in the day with Sarah Palin, we're going to vote for a maverick. She's going to drain the swamp. Uh, Donald Trump is going to shake things up. He's a billionaire, so he doesn't work for other billionaires. And that's going to free us. So now you're out of this Democrat Republic, but you're still trapped in the Western capitalist, white, racist empire narrative. It's just another concentric circle of that nested egg nightmare of weaponized storytelling, right? That catches you every time you think you're out. And then, the, and then you know, if you break out of those, it's like, oh, I got to vote for ALC. Well, if you're not white and you're, you're liberal and you're college educated, I'll break out. I'll break out of the Democrat Republican by voting for the Justice Democrats. How did that work out? Right? How did I mean? I, I don't do I have? To, I don't think I have to explain this. But I mean, if I do, then uh, you, I might probably you know you can watch some other streams. Anyways, so but every but but every time you think you have escaped Western propaganda or Western mass disinformation, there is another narrative there to catch you and that's what most most westerners job is to construct and to maintain this the cia does this obviously in the state department and the the university curriculum designers who are all disproportionately white men uh, uh they all uh, the, the job is there is to construct additional uh webs of mental psychological entrapment to keep you stuck inside of their uh, you know, they, they call them, the, you know, their, their walled garden, right? They really, it's the, really the great wall of Western, it's the great, the great wall of Western propaganda, keeping Westerners in from receiving the truth outside, right? which is the 90% of the world that's outside of the West, right? That's Africa, Asia, Latin America, indigenous people. So there's a wall of, there's a language barrier that's, that, that can be difficult, but then there's a cult, there's many other barriers that keep you from learning anything true. And so that's that part of the, the silver spook job and this is a good place to take a little short break um i am we are now launching a silver spook university this is this is speaking of speaking of 2000 years of western propaganda east west relations oligarchic warmongering greece and rome etc and, and part of that i i am actually asian and pacific islander i'm a, a asian uh, of ancestry and culturally have a chinese japanese uh vietnamese and other uh you know i'm from chinatown and was like raised in that culture I did Chinese line dance and it was in multiple different types of Asian um, cu cu cultural practices. Uh, my family is like, my, my, my uh, grandma was it was uh, full Japanese as well. And so we have like that aspect to it. Um, and so, so some of this is personal as well. Uh, not so, it's all personal. I and mean, also I'm a native Hawaiian on top of that um, by, by ancestry and also as a member of the nation of Hawaii, which is, which is two separate things. Um, but we are we are launching the Silver Spook University. So this is a quick announcement about that. Um, uh, it is not fully. It, it is it is soft launched. As of now, um, I'm, I'm waiting for people to kind of give me some feedback about that um, and what people kind of want to see from it. But um, if you would like, uh, Silver Spook University is about indigenous left education, combining decolonized history current struggles, imagined futures, and cultural analysis from a native Hawaiian activist, educator, and science fiction writer, and professional game developer, that's me, perspective. Uh, and it's a reward for all Patreon patrons. Um, and so all this, this, uh, this is some of the history of Hawaii, including, um, of course, you probably know this one if you follow these streams, but many Americans believe Hawaiians lived in huts prior to colonization. The U.S. actually deindustrialized Hawaii. Before 1898, we already had electricity, mass transit, railroads, Iolani Palace had electric lights before the White House, you know, uh, and uh, you, these are just some of the things that I've posted um, as some examples of things. But um, when you become a Patreon patron, I, I'll show you what, what it is. So um, uh, so if you become a Silver Spook University, if you, if you want to become a Silver Spook Patreon patron, then you get access to Silver Spook University. And what it is is basically, um, uh, you know, the point of it, why do we, why did I do this, um, is what do you need to know today, right? It's a question that people are asking themselves. Like you probably, if you're watching this stream, it's probably because you're like, I don't, I'm not sure I believe I'm not everything that I'm hearing and I'm not sure that I'm getting information and I'm, I'm not sure I'm getting the narratives and the stories and the history and the inform and the education that I need from my Western source, right? Cause you speak in English, that's, that's in the West. So. What do you teach your children today? All right, that's a good question because 
A lot of people are having kids. They're like, what? Western school, I mean, they, they, they ban critical race theory. And that's just, that's just interrogating that racism and the history of racism and colonialism might be a problem, right? And that's banned from schools. It's illegal to teach Marxism, racism, uh, anything that makes white people uncomfortable in, which is like, ne that, that's necessary stuff, right? Sit with your discomfort was one of the clarion calls, one of the, the major important phrases of the George Floyd rebellion for Black Lives Matter, right? And it's illegal to make white people uncomfortable in school, white children. And you can actually go to jail for it. You can lose your job, which could be worse than a jail sentence because I think you have at least meal security in some prisons. <laughs> People actually steal a dollar from a 7-Eleven just to get into prison so they can get health care sometimes. So long story short, it's hard to know. what do you Because you're not going to get the education from public, private, or charter schools in the United States or in the West, I would argue, generally. You're not, I mean, you're going to get some math, how to read maybe, but what are you going to read? What, what are your kids going to read? That the United States is the greatest country in the world? That trans children and trans people are just have mental health disorders? What are you going to learn? That uh, nothing about indigenous people? That the pilgrims and the native people sat down and had a great time? That capitalism is the best thing since sliced bread? That's what you're going to learn. Are you going to learn anything? Are your children going to learn what they really need to learn? Are you, or do you learn? You're not going to, you're not going to learn. Even at, I went to university. They don't teach what you need to learn at university. They teach exactly what they need you to know. That's the point of this today's stream. So, uh, Western, so the silver, Western lies are about past, present, and future permeate formal schooling, modern books, and media. And the visions uh, uh, for the future are shrouded in a fog of war and collapse. There is the West has no narrative. What is the United States saying? Uh, we have to subdue China. Um, how can we best nuclear strike China and Russia? And and it's either collapse, right? It's 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 uh, the uh, we're gonna colonize another planet when this one dies. There's there's no future for the world because the West, outside of its own hubris, outside of outside of the Western system, that is capitalism. That is racism. It's win lose. It's imperialism. It's about economic, political, gender, skin color, vectors. It's bar barbarism. Right? And so all those words are really racism, capitalism, imperialism, colonialism, uh, anti-LGBTQ, misogyny. These are all patriarchy. These are all versions of barbarism, actual barbarism that is projected at other people, but it is what the West has always mastered. So militarism. Um, so there is no solution in the West. There, I mean, you know, I mean, if you just want to get the best deal in the Death Star, party it up, and then watch everything burn. I mean, okay. But if do you want, I mean, do you care about your children? Do you care about other people generally? Do you care about your own education? Um, so, um, so the, and I talk, I, 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 I have uh, uh, lobbied, I have discussed the massive problems of diseducation, right? Mass propagandizing, conditioning that Western public, private, charter school, and universities do. So part of Pacific University is trying to make good on the, is try to give people a alternative personally that you can access, right? Instead of Western uh, schooling, or at least to counter, to countermand and uh, uh, as a counter propagandistic force against what you and your children and other people's children around you, right? Are gonna learn in school. Um, and all, not just school, and in out in, in other other story to, uh, in all, all other f vectors of the world and all other aspects of the world, you're going to re be repeating these stories. So, anyways, so anyway, so um, hundreds of hours of educational, entertaining videos, holistically combining economics, history, politics, hard and soft science, art, pop culture analysis with the si signature silver spook, no holds barred, no BS edge. Um, and so, um, when you become a Patreon patron. Um, it's basically like a lot of this stuff that you're going to get from Silver Spook University is accessible, right? You can, you, I'm not really hiding any of this. You can find, you could find it. But when you become a Patreon patron, the information and how it's presented, um, I, I was thinking of, of this as obviously like you have to be able to read at some level to access a lot of what 
I present on the streams and on the social media and uh, in Neofeud and etc. Uh, so, but other than that, if you can understand English and read or listen to some discussions, I mean, sometimes it goes, it, it can be a little bit, um, you know, it's not as accessible as he spot run. Maybe <laughs> it's not a first grade reading level or third grade reading level, but you know, if you, you know, I, I, I've shared some of this stuff with my, some with, with my own kids and like, they're, you know, they're like some elementary, not quite even junior high age. And they understand a lot of it. Kids are a lot smarter than the Western, uh, per- child rearing advice culture <laughs> gives the kids credit for anyways. So at the Silver Spook University, uh, you it's like, as if you are being introduced to like a curricula at an academy or a school. And these are the things you can learn in, in, in something of an order. So we have, uh, so, so it's like, if you don't know anything about, if you have no, if you never heard any silver spook streams, never follow silver spook on social media, you never listen to anything that I've said. And Holly is important because Holly actually put a lot of these links and stuff together. So it's like part of the silver spook collective, it's the silver spook cooperative, right? It's like, if you follow the silver spook correct, if you follow the silver spook, um, uh, curriculum right that goes in order and it's hundreds of hours it's a lot of time it would take to get through all of it then if by if you went through that then you should at least have some solid non-western actual education right in the terms of the most important aspects that you're not going to get right so in politics economics history world history indigenous history like uh i'm not an expert in every people i can't i just try my best to take what's most important i think and try to convey that and then contextualize it uh you know so i don't don't, i'm not a master uh i'm not i don't have a phd in african history but we have i have aspects about african i have a subsection right about african um where is it true history uh focusing on Where's the Africa? Oh yeah. So true world history, Africa focused, right? And then I'll, uh, so I'll take that part of, I'll take that, those, the, the African people uh, in Africa and in diaspora and connect like the struggles of racism to culture, like queen of the damn, the movie and like what the, 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 the storytelling in this in Hollywood. And then, and uh, how that connects to the actual history of how Africa and, and Asia as part of Afro Asia were demonized um and a lot of lies that were said and then how that connects to actually better books like black athena that are more honest that were basically blacklisted in western academia uh and uh and you know and so i'm not an expert on all these subjects but i'm trying to take the things that are most important and then connecting them to how those impact all these other systems in a global uh way while trying to be somewhat entertaining and not so dry that people just want to throw the book out the window. I mean, so I put, obviously I make jokes and I go on random digressions that are hopefully somewhat entertaining and not just me, um, having ADHD, but anyways, so anyways, there's a little, there's a little mental, mental health, uh, neurodivergent joke for you. As Taika Waititi would say, as the rock man in Thor Ragnarok is a little rock, paper, scissors joke for you. Anyway. So anyways, so Silver Spook University, we go through Hawaiian history uh, true Hawaiian history, uh, the most most salient. Just since we're here, so the most salient parts. Oh, the most salient parts. Uh, 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 I start with the most important thing, which is, uh, or the most the most not the, the most thing that's gonna shock the most, and the thing that people, if you only read five sentences of any Silver Spook, this is the most important thing, and then from there it, it kind of it it expands in uh, concentric circles, right? In in Matryoshka dolls. Because you know our, our 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 Russian comrades don't are not shamed by this, but you know, in a in a in a concentric circles of a small nugget of truth, and then and then moving it outwards into larger and larger, uh, expanding, uh, 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 like 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 an expanding spotlight growing out from Hawaii around to Americas, to Indigenous people through space and through time through, through Asia to Africa, uh, is kind of the concept, and you know, and so because um, I'm native Hawaiian, and so. Uh, and that's what I know the most is that experience. So we start from Hawaii. Since the U.S. banned Hawaiian language, it nearly went extinct. Less than 100 kids spoke it in the eight, uh, in the 80s. Kids are 
still punished for speaking Hawaiian today, the fact that 30,000 plus Hawaiians speak it now is testament to our struggle to preserve our culture from eradication. So I have like social media links to the the, the threads that um, I have a lot of these threads. If you ever follow me on social media, especially on Twitter. And so I have an entire, I have an entire, uh, uh, you know, with, with the pictures and everything that will, th- that, that you can, you can refer to uh, out from the Silver Spook University page. And then the previous overthrow of Hawaii was the most advanced civilization in the world. We had the Hawaii had the highest literacy rate, world's first universal health care system, no homelessness, public mass transit, renewable hydropowered cities before the U.S. capital had lights. We invented submarines before Jules Verne published 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And Hawaii had full racial equality for blacks, uh, Asians as the West enslaved and subjugated them. And so I have like that whole, uh, you know, that whole thread. Um, oh, hang on. Is it I'm going to have to fix that one. But anyways, uh, you know, we have that whole thread um, that you can refer to. And so obviously, if you follow my streams, you you, you may have already seen that, right? You've seen the thread about Kalakaua, who invented the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea style uh, subaquatic vehicle. We have the the birth, the uh, citizenship certificate for African person who uh, was a slave in the United States, would have been segregated and subjugate, sub, subjugated to terrible racism in Canada, but was fully equal citizen in Hawaii. And so um, anyway, and so then um, try to stay on task. So we have the, uh, you know, so Hawaiian history, starting from the most important things people don't know that they need to know. And then attempted annihilation of Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders, uh, uh, connecting it to present events, other historical events, African history, uh, you know, Asian history, indigenous history. um, Okay, kind of like spiraling out from there. Uh, Attempted uh, Native Hawaiian and gender fluidity and queer acceptance. So I thought just about that. Um, about because Hawaiians did. Oh, I'm sorry. This is like a this is a video about um, Mahu and the third genders. Uh, the fact that Hawaii had full gender fluidity, uh, acceptance of all LGBTQ plus people, uh, no patriarchal system in the in the in the Western sense. Um, and lots lots of uh, how Keanu Reeves and his Hawaiian Chinese ancestry, um, are very important to his life and his work in fact and to hawaii as well and how he is a anyway u.s navy so so uh the red hill oil spill luna oil mexi total liberation uh bothered boy um uh, all the other events that i've been on anyway so it's going from hawaii and then lots of i mean there's like a lot so there's a lot right and so if if somebody had never heard and experienced any silver spook anything before if you went through everything in the silver spook university it's it's made in a way that you could learn as if you were going through you know a two or four year college degree or not i don't you know or just going through high school but you're like going through the university system learning all of this information in a way that is more organized than if you just tune into my youtube channel or if you just follow me on social media it's more immediate to the moment and it's not you you could find potentially a lot of this stuff but it's going to be difficult you know it could be difficult so this is organizing all of everything that I've ever put out there, um, uh, all the content, video, and social media, uh, et cetera. And of course, I make games too, and so I try to tie that in as well. And then making it in a way that it's 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 uh, accessible, uh, organizable, uh, or or you know uh, uh, accessible by category or content type, in a way that I, I'm trying to think of other ways to make it even more accessible, but. Uh, and more searchable, but um, also you can make it. Um, and if you go through it, it's going to give you everything that you would need. I, I think that I think that somebody that somebody who wants to be a participant of a human rights respecting, democratic, uh, uh, win win, uh, ethical, <laughs> uh, modern, advanced civilization, right on the right side of history, everything that they would need to have, as far as I can gather it i'm not again i'm not perfect and i you know, i i just try the best to tell the truth about these topics as i can manage being non not affiliated with any capitalist corporation the u.s government any ngo any western you know state or uh private entity at all because it's all we're all funded by patreon support and we're funded by the sales of the games that we made at the silver spook cooperative non-capitalist 
uh, native Hawaiian, indigenous linebacker, you know, all, 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 you know, everything we do. The reason why I couldn't do this if I was working for any university or any state entity or any corporate entity, really, because they would all be firing me, basically. I've been fired from multiple jobs for doing stuff like this. True world history, Africa focused. Um, so we go through we go through Hawaiian history and uh, uh, streams and content specifically uh, aimed uh, centering. It doesn't n- nothing I ever do. This is the difficulty. Is that nothing I ever do? Because I don't believe that you can have an accurate picture without getting gl- global and historical context for everything. So I'm always that's part of why I have to constantly, you know, and also not just history, but also the different compartments. So like compartmentalizing off the uh economic from the political as a weapon of propag- of western propaganda or imperial barbarian propaganda compartmentalizing off the east uh from africa or east from west is another you know and so so i'm constantly having to go back but but each and so the silver spook streams and the silver spook threads spiral outwards but then they always come back inwards um or hopefully if i'm doing it the way that i think i should be doing it um so each one of these uh, links goes to some text or video content that centers a particular topic, but then it goes to a variety of other topics and then it comes back to this to the central one, right? So Africa focused Stargate and Ancient Aliens, Woman King, uh, that checkmates Eurocentrism, Wendell and Wild, Zombie Democracy versus Community. Anyway, um, so then I have True World History that focuses on, on Asia with Dune and the Grand Chessboard. <laughs> Uh, Wu Assassins and the Asian Diaspora, Day the Earth Stood Still, and Win-Win Cooperation 101 for Westerners. Uma and the Horror of Being Asian in the Western World. Um, Contra and the True Liberators of Earth that, that are Vietnam. That was the stream I did around the time of the the, the Colonators game. Um, anyways, so uh, True History from America, Turtle Island focused. The Americas, like the indigenous people, Native Americans, Native indigenous people of Turtle Island, and then Pacific, but not necessarily Hawaii focus, and then economics. So I've got multiple streams just about, you know, a high finance. So what is a, what is a no income, no jobs, no assets loan, and how do high frequency trading algorithmic programmers for Goldman Sachs destabilize the world economy and maintain uh, the Greco-Roman oligarchic inheritors of of, uh, 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 of, of, for example, the Forbes 500 list. Anyways, so true economics, um, billionaire Dweeb Noir and how the CEO of, anyways, Cowboy Bebop, Cartels and Space Colonies, Song of Texas, Ice and California Wildfire, uh, Severance and Worker din- Disownership. So a lot of these are, send- I, I, I talk about a movie and then I go in because that's just how I've been doing, I've been organizing these streams. Um, race and gender focused analysis, anyways, analysis of the West, dismantling, dismantling the Imperium. Uh, obviously, I've got a lot on that artificial. Just focusing on artificial intelligence, social media, and the digital Death Star versus the Life Star. Of uh, that's part of what we're trying to do. Discussions of the future from Indigenous, non-Western perspectives. Cyberpunk and science fiction from Indigenous and BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and people of color perspectives. International Silver Spook summits. Those are some of the. Those are some of my favorite ones. That's the, the um, the panels with Luna, uh, you know, Asian, uh, Vietnamese, Chinese. Pacific Islanders, Native Americans. I mean, everybody has been in these panels. I mean, people from all, literally across the world have been in these panels. Um, a lot of them organized with our friend uh, Luna Oi, uh, uh, our Vietnamese communist uh, comrade. So anyways, so, uh, and then there's the goth panel it has a special special section because we have a special place in, in, in my life and in my, in my dark g- indigenous goth Hawaiian heart. But anyways, back to the, back to the topic. Um, Yeah, Strin says, um, without intersectionality, you can't really cover one topic without touching the others. Yeah, so uh, a lot of a lot of these uh, you know things they 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 they, they touch. Uh, it's hard to talk about one and without talking about the others. And in fact, I would argue, you know, if you don't bring up the others, that's that is a, that is part of how you stay stuck, right? Staying stuck in your university department on your tiny little narrow topic like street lights from 1920 to 1925 in Portugal, or uh, uh, you know, uh, decolonize, uh, decolonizing, uh, Californian, you know, gold rush sweatshirts from 19, you know, 18, 
uh, 49 to 1850. <laughs> staying in your tiny little narrow little lane. Sometimes people say stay in your lane. But not to say that you should speak for all the people, but but not investigating outside of your narrow little lane is one way that you can keep and not connecting what you're doing in your university to what you're doing, right? To to the activism in the present on the ground, to the actual political realities that you're in, right? Because the stories are not his stories are politics, right? Get the games out of no politics in my video games, no politics in my Star Wars, no politics. The thing is, no politics in my university, no politics in my school. All everything is political, right? And 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 locking people away, right? into 40 years of university study as a professor or as a student or as a grad student or whatever, right? And just locking people into the little narrow PhDs and the little narrow degrees and the little narrow boxes. They're like, like little cubicles, right? Is how people can remain stuck in the Imperium in their little phalanx rank, right? As I like to say, having a, you being a death, a, 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 a uh, what is it? Star Destroyer pilot with Excel spreadsheet characteristics. That's what it is to be a Wall Street trader or quant. You know, you could even be doing really interesting crypt, crypt, uh, you know, cryptology and uh, quantum mechanical study. But if you only study your narrow little focus, that's, that's literally how they keep coders for the military industrial complex programming the AI uh, gate and facial recognition systems and GPS auto, auto drone kill list system so that American AI powered drones can massacre innocent people, especially whistleblowers and journalists in uh, reporting in war zones. That's literally what drones do. In fact, a lot, some of the time um, calling them enemy combatants, right? People who are programming that kind of stuff are literally kept in. They, they, they keep doing that. If they knew what they were actually creating, if people could see, uh, sometimes they call it naked lunch, but if you could actually see based on the book, but uh, <laughs> uh, don't, uh, don't read that if you are, are, are squeamish. But you know, if you could see what it was that you were creating, you would not be creating that. And so, compartmentalization through space and time, compartmentalization and and keeping pe people siloed off in a, in one of those, like I said, the red, white, and blue mat matryoshka or the eagle eggs, right? Keeping you stuck in not just the Democrat Republican narratives, or if we just vote in it for a progressive, that's going to shake up our system narrative, right? But it's also keeping you stuck in my narrow computer science degree focus or my narrow sociology focus or my narrow anthropology focus. If you're an anthropologist in the Western uh, uh, university system, it, you, you, you're a war criminal basically at this point. But um, uh, I, I should say at this point, the anthropology department was the CIA for the British that helped uh, figure out the best way to undo and destroy and commit genocide against indigenous people to steal their land and resources. That's what anthropology began as, going into the Trobian Islanders and going, if you marry this particular individual, it'll make it easier to steal their entire island and take all of their wealth and all their resources and enslave them. That's what anthropology was for. And the fact that people don't even know that who have degrees in anthropology, or history is not history in the West, history is is. Uh, long form war propaganda for nerdy people run by 90% privileged white dudes. That's who writes the history curriculum for the West. Um, anyways, so that that's that's part of why Silver Spook University exists and that's part of why I created it. And back to 2000 years of Western propaganda. So um, East-West relations and oligarchic warmongers of Greece and Rome, 2000 years of anti-Asian hate. So I, don't, I think I've touched on a lot of this um, I haven't really touched on the movie that much. Uh, um, so let's let's uh, let's let's you know let's 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 jump in though. So with, with, with Alexander, you know, obviously he, you know, Alexander the Great was a person, right? Who is what? What is why is he unique, right? Why did they make a movie about him? There was a terrible. Western propaganda movie called The 300, right? Which was made uh, around the same time. Um, actually, this is, I'm going to go back to my my uh, Riddick thread after this. This is a good time for that. Alexander III of Macedon, 356 BC, June uh, 323 BC, 
was commonly known as Alexander the Great, a king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon, succeeded his father Philip II to the throne in 336, spent most of his ruling years conducting lengthy military campaigns throughout Western Asia and Egypt. By the age of 30, he had created one of the largest empires in history, stretching from Greece to northwestern India. He was undefeated in battle and is widely considered to be one of history's greatest and most successful military commanders. So at the age of 16, he was tutored by Aristotle. In 335 BC, shortly after his assumption of the kingship over Macedon, he campaigned in the Balkans and uh, reasserted control over Thrace and Illyria before marching on the city of Thebes. Anyways, so um, his, his story is uh, one of the, uh, you know, he's a Western leader, right? And his story is one of, uh, let me see if I can get a picture of the, 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 the length of the empire. And his, his story is, okay, conquered areas. Let's see if I can get an image of that. Yeah. So he, uh, unlike 300, right, by Zack Snyder, terrible movie. I have I have entire YouTube videos on, on that. So I like, uh, but the 300 <clears throat> predated, right? The movie 300, um, which was also Western propaganda, much, much more terrible. Western propaganda, uh, much more egregious and uh, um, highfalutin, um, and with uh, worse cinematography, I would argue. But anyways, it's a story of the Persians, right, coming from the east to the west to Greece, and uh, uh, you know the great, right, the so-called great Greek free thinking rational, um, virtuous, right? Uh, these very civilized, non-barbarian, right? Greeks that are also genetically superior, right? Uh, in, in the eyes, this is actually comes through in Alexander as well. In the eyes of the Greeks, they were better than the people of Asia. They were better than the Persians. Um, the Persians had, were fallen. They were degenerate. They were backward. Um, even in Alexander, Aristotle has this. Yes, well, the, the 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 peoples of Asia they don't have virtue. They don't have democracy. They don't have freedom. They don't have rationality. They don't have individuality. Right? These this this. I mean, I want to say that this narrative, right, about the great Western free thinking, right, freedom democracy right human rights they have slaves they have slaves they have sex men have sex with men right they have gay people they have trans people like literally these were arguments right that jackson that's funny because the greeks actually had sex with uh like 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 obviously men loving men was a thing that was happening in greece but the west uh uh, uh was using uh the well, the, the Western homophobia in the two thousands, right, was rearing its head as part of a weapon, right? The Western bigotry, right, which is separation of people based on arbitrary differences, right, and making one greater and one lesser, as justification for plunder, as justification for war, as justification for enslavement, as justification for invasion, genocide, forced language bans, culture bans, all those things, right? Um, based on the supremacy of one people, gender skin color, uh, uh, capital accumulation amount, etc. All of those things, right? Um, and uh, were coming to fruition in these narratives that are being told to Alexander by Aristotle, right? The, the, great, the great Greek philosophers, right? When you want to have like some really nasty white supremacist takes, Eurocentric takes, look at, you know, Greek statue Twitter, right? But the Greek uh, philosophers, right? I would argue actually a lot of Western philosophers, generally speaking, including the Greek philosophers, were some of the lead propagandists. They were like the priestly class for the Roman Empire, right? They told the story of the divine mandate and how and and the and you should the poor in spirit shall inherit not the poor the poor in spirit <laughs> shall inherit the earth and by giving thine tithes and giving thine soul to the just divine king slash emperor, I mean the king in the post collapse of Roman Empire times with the Holy Roman Empire and the and the, the the narratives that keep 
the supremacy of the Romans going, or the supremacy of the British Empire going, or the supremacy of the American Empire going, while at the same time, Americans are actually not doing that well. The thing is, a lot of Greeks inside of Greece were not doing very well. The average Roman was falling into starvation and having their land stolen, the Roman farmer under the Caesars. But they would talk about themselves, right? The people that wrote the books that everyone was forced to read, right? About the Greeks and about the Romans were that we were more virtuous. We are better people. And by we, I mean the, the native-born Greek Macedonian dudes with vast tracts of land and millions and millions of drachma. Because they didn't have dollars at the time, but they had capital accumulation. Capitalism was, capitalism, I will argue, has never not existed in the Western world, ever. Greece, Rome, medieval Europe to the present. It, there's never not been uh, subjugation of others, exploitation, wh wh whatever the definition of capitalism. It's always existed in the West. With varying, the, 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 the utility of telling and, and the, the, the story of Western capitalism has varied at different times. Often they just subjugate its existence. In the Cold War, the West, right, when standing against, standing against the USSR, uh, communist China, and a growing non-capitalist world, right, then the capitalism story came to the forefront with Ayn Rand who said, right, Atlas shrugged and the greatest, right, the core of America's society and its great secret, its great power, it lies in its selfish, individual uh, pursuit of quote-unquote happiness, private property, private industry, and individual, selfish individualism brings about the greatest good for all, right? If we all pursue our rational self-interest, right? Capitalism is America, right? Ayn Rand actually said, get further away. Not that Americans did it. Not that Americans needed to be told to be selfish, oligarchic, racist, money hoarders, but Ayn Rand said you should be even harder. You should be much more uh, solidly and proudly capitalist. Celebrate the wealth of individuals. Be put your citizen canes up on pedestal. Put your great newspaper barons. Put your Vanderbilts. Put your Elon Musk. Well, I didn't have Elon at the time. Put your billionaires. Put your Fords up on a pedestal. Worship wealth because that is what has made the West great. But Ayn Rand is actually correct because the West has always been capitalistic. It's always been uh, worshiping. The, the, the Greeks and the Romans worship wealth. Literally, having the most slaves under, in the Greece and Rome, having the nicest, massive uh, toga parties, the best wine, the most wine, gold, jewels, vast tracts of land, palatial, uh, uh, palatial houses, and uh, beautiful pillars. Those were symbols of capital accumulation for the Greeks and the Romans who lauded themselves as better than Asians and Africans. That was a justification for what this screen is showing. Because we are better, you're not. The Greeks were never better than anyone else. The Romans were never better. They were actually worse, arguably, than, than all of them. The Americans, the Europeans, the British, the French, and the Spanish were never better than anyone they were conquering. The Americans certainly aren't. It's only obvious now. Because the East has militarily, the the rest of the world has finally got to the point where they can actually meet the the West at its military uh, uh, level. The problem is that they st the East and the South and the non-West uh, still have difficulty in narrative. Comp they, they, they will even admit that the narrative storytelling. Right? Russia is even winning the war in Ukraine, but they're losing the informational war. Not in the global South though, but in the West, they're still. The West is not able to propagandize the non-West, Asia, Africa, and, and, and the Turtle Island and Pacific. But the, inside the West, the East is still losing the, the narrative war, uh, which is not good because, you know, it makes sense because that's the part that the West can most control, the English-speaking French, the Franco, Spanish, all the Holy Roman Emperor, Imperial languages. All the Greco-Roman languages, which is the Greco-Roman barbarian cultures, French, Spanish, English, those are still not out of the control. Those are still those are still full of disinformation, right? Although South and Central America are are realizing more who they are, but there's still a deep struggle there. But outside of that, everybody's not buying the U.S. story. 
they're not buying the US, NATO, and European story. Um, but the reality is that um, they have never, the story that the West has told itself, right, is that they were, they, they were deserved to take Asia. They deserved Persia. They deserved Assyria. It was only right and good. Egypt was ours because the Africans are backward. They are subhuman. They are degenerate. They are uh, throwing spears at each other. They are, they are um, unclean and et cetera, et cetera. The Asians, and then later on, the, the, the skin color becomes more important post, you know, uh, post like 1500s after the, when, when, when Europe's, when Europe's, when the West like get uh, gets its imperial act back together and it starts expanding beyond its European, uh, you know, borders, then the, the the race comes more to more to. It's very important. The race is more important to the Northern Europeans, like the British, because for the Spanish, the differentiation between the Spaniard in terms of skin color and some some African and and indigenous people in Turtle Island that they're colonizing is is harder. Right. And so I would argue, in fact, that if you look at Western culture, it what matters most is not um, the, the 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 systems, their innovations, if you can call them that. Right. What the West didn't create the black powder. It didn't create fire. It didn't create firearms. It didn't create the justice system. It didn't create democracy. China actually invent, pioneered a lot of those and in Turtle Island. It didn't create paper. It didn't create anything useful. It didn't create separation of powers. That was also stolen from China. It didn't create its own constitution that was stolen from the Iroquois. The West literally stole everything that it ever had. Black women made all of the NASA, uh, 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 you know, quantum leaps that put a white man on the moon doing the post Newtonian calculus. That wasn't even white guys doing that. The West has never actually created anything, but the West has done a few things. Like, for example, when they, when they, uh, you know, uh, they created racism, they invented capitalism. Those are great inventions that they did. The racism, you can almost tell what kind of culture was going to come out of a place based on the demographics of that place. The Spaniards weaponized Catholicism because you could differentiate a Catholic Christian Spaniard for purposes of win-lose barbarism against a non-Catholic uh, 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 you know, heathen in Africa or a Turtle Island. But they were darker skinned, so they didn't center that. The Northern Europeans, they could weaponize the differentials of skin color better, and so they centered that. So the Anglo-Saxon Empire is the one-drop rule in the in, you know in in uh, the Anglo-Saxon world, the 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 uh, and the Dutch obviously the Northern Europeans they center race because it can be weaponized to mass accumulate wealth and power for a minority and perpetuate selfish barbaric ways. But obviously, they did, it's not to say that the the Greeks and the Romans weren't they didn't have horrible, nasty socially unjust ways but it wasn't specifically the skin color necessarily at the time now they had other things they had they had greekness that was superior to asianness they had uh patriarchy they had slavery they had all you know they had capital wealth worship was superior right but it, sometimes they would hide it and they would say but the wealthy great upper class noble greeks are more we right you know uh prosperity doctrine if you are good if you are morally morally scientifically uh and, and intellectually superior then you will be financially superior your your dollar your bank account reflects your soul right and so the greeks had that as well so that's what the wealth worship was about it was about justifying the continued exploitation by saying again propaganda right and then and then by extension right to become a great and powerful greek you would have to plunder other it's kind of like for the United States Fortune 500 top Wall Street executives to maintain their billions of dollars and increase them, they have to continuous, and the military industrial complex that supports that, they have to continuously engage in needless wars of aggression for the, for the, for the weapons makers and as well as for the resource plunderers of Africa, Latin America, and Asia that makes the real money for Wall Street, right? And for those executives. So Greece was the same way. Greece had to tell their own population, join the military, son. Join the military, you know, uh, join the military, Achilles uh, 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 lover. Join the military and be like Heracles. Join the military, join the Greek army and fight for our great country because we're better. 
not is not it was never for the for the benefit of the Greek people. In fact, Alexander got hundreds of thousands of his people killed. Alexander did genocide. Alexander was a murderer, uh, high on his own supply. Alexander was like uh, 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 MacArthur, but instead of unsinkable aircraft carriers, he had impenetrable, impenetrable fortresses and uh, very high mountains to surveil all of his genocide. Alexander was never great. He died at the age of 30. And there's a lot of storytelling to justify infinite warfare and the greatness of the genocide project of the entire so-called Western world. That is, it was Greece, and then it was Rome, and then it was feudal hell world Europe, and then it was back to colonizing and murdering and genociding to benefit a minority of British, uh, uh, Scrooges, French Versailles kings slash millionaires. Because every, every French aristocrat feudal lord was also a capitalist lord and colonial beneficiary. And the Americans are just continuing this process. So, uh, And so the these, this concept of the great this, the great man of history, the great... This is, a, this is about maintaining, building on existing disinformational stories about who the West is, about who Greece and Rome were, right? It's very important. It's very important. The European col colonists worshipped and loved, and, and Americans especially, looked to Greece and Rome as like they looked to the Eye of Providence, like they looked to Doctrine of Discovery, like they looked to these narratives about about that the Anuit Coeptus, like there's a scene from Neo 2, right? It Anuit Coeptus is on the reverse side of the US one dollar bill. Um let's see if I find okay, let's see if I can find that here. Here, here, here's your, here's your, here's your, uh, here's a free Neo Two sneak peek for you. Since we're, since we're, uh, I'm gonna take a short little break from staring at walls of text. Um, but here, here is a little bit that I actually have created for the game Neo Two, that I am still working on. I swear it's coming out sometime in the near future. But uh, I have a few, I have a little bit more to do. So let me see if I can find that. Um, oh, actually, I think I posted it all over here. Okay, so. The reason why I'm going to bring it up is because, yeah. So this is actually a screenshot from Neo Feud 2. Um, this is a scene where you have all of the all of the Greco, Roman, British, left, right, and center uh, Americans, uh, Canadians, and the Japanese fascists, Im Imperials, um, in Neo Feud 2. <laughs> uh, they all get launched into, they all get flushed down the drain of their own Death Star. Uh, in in the game at some point, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, this is just a random little 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 screen grab for you. Um, well, that royal flush got flushed down the reactor core drain. Anyways, so, but on the on the floor, I don't know if you can see that it says uh, Anuit Coeptus, right? And SP SPQE is S, it, it, Neo Field Two is a science fictional um, game. It takes place in a galaxy wide uh, civilizational conflict between East and West, and uh, 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 win-win cooperation and colonization. But the Anuit, Anuit Coeptus is a phrase that means it approves, right? And it, it, what is it? What it? The it is God. But it, you could also read the it is Deus. It is the Christian God. But it is it is just generally we are right, right? But most, most Western interpretations, because most Western culture is Christian, interprets it as God. But what it, what it means is... Um, uh, Anuak Kleptis means one of two models on the reverse side of the Great Seal of the United States. The literal translation is he, she uh, favors or has favored our undertakings. Well, what we do is just, right? The eye of providence. So this, so, so, and, and, and so, uh, Norvos Ordo Seclorum is the new world order, right? So this is just, the Norvos Ordo Seclorum in one sense is um, God, uh, God or the universe, right? Approves of, again, Genocide, slaughter, cultural ban, language ban, forced assimilation, right? Violation of human rights, slavery. What did the, what did what did the Greeks do in Asia? They actually had, they had they they did the same thing that the United States they did the same thing that the Anglo Saxons did in North America, what the Spaniards did in South America. 
right? Ana, but Anwar Kaptis means what we are doing is approved by God, deity. What we're doing is just. What we're doing is right. What we're doing, and we're making a new order, right? We're taking, we're taking our European idea, and we're expanding it to this new place. It's called the New World, right? Some of them, they call it America, based on some Italian map maker, Amerigo Vespucci, right? Why exactly? Well, uh, who, who, who has the most money for the bribes under the barbarians that run Europe? So, but it means expanding our current project. It, it means we're going to do these horrible acts, if you think about it, there is a certain guilty conscience, right? Because it says, what we're going to do is actually nightmarish, horrible, barbaric, the most disgusting, gross, uh, unthinkable behavior any human could exhibit. It's it's, it's the, 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 the heart of darkness is what we're going to do. And not just the book, I just mean generally. And not just the movie about, the, about what the U.S. did in East Asia and Cold War. But just generally. We are going to do the darkest possible thing. We're going to do the most evil heinous uh satanic thing We're, we are going to literally be the devil and the guilty conscience is that's why these phrases have to be put up whenever the west does something right which is that but what we're doing is for a good cause what we're doing it is it is approved what we're doing it will try your conscience it will make your stomach turn when you join the u.s military you're going to commit war crimes and you're going to shoot children for no reason but what you're doing is approved. When you join the Greek military and you go kill a bunch of uh, 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 people that are just living in their villages, trying to survive, trying to just be who they are in the uh, in in Bacta or in uh, uh, India or in Persia. When you go to Darius's land, he is an authoritarian despot. He has to be overthrown. And what we're doing, I know you, it looks like you're going to be killing a uh, lots of young people. You're going to be harming innocent people. You're going to enslave children and women. And it looks bad. But but Zeus approves. You know, Anu et Kleptis. What we're doing seems really bad. When we go to Britain as a Roman army and we slaughter them and we build a Piccadilly circus on their dead bodies. When we, when we, when we bathe Turtle Island in blood, it's going to seem really bad. When you skin the women and the children and you bring the scalps for $25... To uh, Jefferson and to Washington's little town, and you sell the dead white Indian scalp, and you buy a black slave with the money. That seems really bad. That seems evil. But but we are Christian, European, great, Western descendants of Aristotle, descendants of uh, uh, Alexander. We are descendants of Caesar. We are descendants of the great British, we are descendants of the great uh, 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 French kings and the great culture culture that we have. And so everything that we do, everything that we do all across this world, all the blood that we shed across this world is approved. And so and that and so religion and so that's religion, that's Western religion, and that's Western like that's Western philosophy. So philosophers are intellectual war criminals in the West. That's really what they are. They justify Right, that's what Hegel did. Uh, that's actually what all most of them did, which is to think about ways to construct stories, right? Theological or philosophical. And they are, the, the theologians and philosophers, you know, but we have to think of ways to 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 make this evil, unhinged insanity make sense. And that's what they pay you money for in the West. That's called a, it's called being a writer for the BBC. Or being a uh, uh, NED paid, uh, 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 you know, human rights watch investigator, it's about constructing a narrative, right? So the human rights violations of today is is it is the it is the it is the Aristotle of 2300 BC, you know, or 2300 years ago, right? The 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 human rights violations in Xinjiang is the Persian despots are stomping on the heads of little children. Never mind, I just paid that Persian. To, I paid the Persian child to take one of his sandals and put it on his head so that I could get all of the young Greek men to sign up for the military and get themselves killed in a needless war throughout Asia. That it's just but 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 Zeus God approves because we brought civilization to, right? Uh, Alexander came through Babylon and he civilized it. Alexander came through 
you know, the, the, the regions that's called Afghanistan, if I'm not mistaken, Alexander came to India, South Central Asia, and in all of these places, he met the barbarians and he civilized them. He brought, like, 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 like America met the barbarians in Turtle Island and they civilized them. And they brought civilization. The United States killed the Indian and saved the Greek American man. Right? Residential schools in Canada civilized the indigenous people. And so God approves, right? And the Catholic Pope approved all of that. The Catholic Pope, the Catholic clergy, the Catholic priests took little children and fed them tape, uh, uh, glue, and killed them and slaughtered and sexually abused and slaughtered them on the campuses of the schools in Canada. But God approved that action until 1997 and actually until today, as genocide continues to this very second inside of Canada and inside the United States and illegally occupied Hawaii. So storytelling and human rights and g genocide it, it, well other people projecting what you do onto other people is always been the major tactic projecting your own war crimes projecting your own slavery projecting right xinjiang cotton is picked by uyghur slaves they, they have chain gangs of uyghur ethnic minority slaves you know wearing potato sacks right saying yes massa to the Chinese overlord. That is a that's a story constructed by, and fed to, the West. Like another, it is a, it is the is the great. There's no Great Wall of China, right now. It's not really a West. There's no Great Fire Wall keeping Western information out. They're, the Chinese can get. You can use a proxy and access BBC, the New York Times, and Twitter if they want to, and they do if they feel like it. It's just full of disgusting disinformation, so they don't. The Xinjiang cotton thing was about projecting Western slavery onto other people to justify more conquest. It's re alexanderification right? Alexander was projecting the slavery that the Greeks practiced. Huge swaths of Greece was the slaves, producing unpaid labor, labor value for their capitalist slash racist slash supremacist Greek overlords. And then they projected slavery onto Darius in the same way that the slavery was projected onto Asia in the same way that the BBC, the New York Times, who are all wealthy capitalist overlords exploiting their own underpaid healthcareless, you know, Americans going, please, please give me like, you know, a, 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 give me like my insulin. I'm going to die. And then they die. Right. And who it literally enslaved and still America has two and a half million slaves in prison, mostly black, put chain gangs of black men uh, holding fire hoses, dying in California wildfires put there by Joseph Biden in the California penitent system, projecting America's ongoing slavery and historical cotton picking black slavery onto China. That's what, this is the only thing that, and, and, and that's why you have to put another trillion dollars into the military budget so we can enlist a bunch of good young men behind Alexander, I'm sorry, behind Tony Blinken and G.I. Joe and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dwayne The Rock Johnson it's just a new Alexander. Follow me, young children. It, he, his Alexander's story is fraudulent. But it's just like Dwayne. Follow me, young children, with G.I. Joe, uh, 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 and with all the young G.I. Joes into battle with China. Follow me into Taiwan, children. Follow me into Japan and Okinawa and into uh, Korea and South Korea. Follow me, STEM graduates, into programming the drones, into building the Lockheed Martin. Follow me onto the ship. The British press gang hordes of young men in the 16 to 18 year old range with nothing to do and nothing to lose because they were broke in Charles Dickens, Britain, onto ships so that they can go and enslave in the slave trade and colonize Africa, Asia, and the Pacific. Get in there, young bucko. Get in that ship. You want to see the world? Join the Navy. Join the British Navy and gain glory and gain honor for Mother Britain and, and you know, make a whole lot of money and have sex with so many Asian and African women. Which is what the U.S. military does in the Asia-Pacific region, just like the British did, just like the Greeks did, just like they all did. The West has never been anything but, and it's very important to tell very strong, good, powerful, moving, gripping stories with lots of emotional twists and turns to the young men in particular so they can all sign up to go massacre everyone else or 
massacre everyone else with high frequency trading Goldman Sachs algorithm programming characteristics or drone programming characteristics or whatever you know this everyone sign up and like you know you know there's that Hillary Clinton is like shaking the hands of a young Hispanic woman from Brazil or Chile and she's like my grandmother as a Latin American Chilean woman I'm so happy to work for the American CIA it was a Twitter ad you see that because now I am helping bring democracy and liberty to the free world. It's like, it was like night, nightmarishly hypocritical. If you know what the U.S. did to Chile. I mean, what the U.S. did to everybody. But especially places like Chile and the South American country. And she's like, and the ad was to get young, educated women of color who are doing too much education. And, dis and stopping Western propaganda from maintaining its capitalist, imperialist, racist, patriarchal complex. There are too many well-educated, disproportionately non-men of color getting too many followers on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. That's why they're trying to ban TikTok. Educating to the chagrin of Alexander's funders of the present, right? And so the ads are trying to get people to work for the CIA, work for the NED, work for the US. Sign up, sign up for the intellectual imperium. Join, join the Western diseducate, help us diseducate people. I mean, I'm sorry, help us realize how awesome America is and how much they need our coup, not for Bolivia's lithium with Elon, we will coup whoever we want, Musk, but help us, help them understand how much they really, really, really just need to get out with them goose-stepping Nazis and massacre, you know, the CIA, well, actually, nowadays the CIA, they, they don't have really good storytelling. So what they do is, Okay, we're not as good at storytelling. Here's a bunch of central bank printed quantitative easing infinity US dollars. Here fascist or here upset white descendant of a capitalist in Bolivia, Afghanistan, uh, you know, Brazil. Have the bag of money and go massacre all the leftists and indigenous. So that the CIA, the West is falling down on the storytelling nowadays. I got to say the, 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 the story is storytelling is not too, not, not too good anymore. Um, but anyway, so I think I hope that I hope that uh, that point is uh, uh, made at least somewhat that without without the storytelling, without the with, 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 and, and so number one, weaponized storytelling is what propaganda is. Right. Everyone does storytelling of some kind. Right. But are we telling the stories in the service? Are we are we telling stories in good faith? Right. You can ask Silver Spook, how do I know you're not just telling me some bullshit story because you want to make a billion dollars and retire on your own white sand beach? Well, number one, I already live on a place full of white sand beaches. Number two, the white sand is stolen from another indigenous Pacific island and it destroyed the coral reef. So I don't really, I like black sand because I'm goth as fuck. And also I don't want your colonizer Waikiki commodification of my culture. Okay, so thanks. Thanks. I don't need a white sand beach. Number three, uh, I could be making some shit up. But that's why you should do your own research. But that's not a thing that the West does. But number four, to do your own research is very difficult in the West because of how much other people's stories, which is what all research is, is looking at other people's stories, right? And listening to them and then trying to discern based on other people's story. I mean, you only ever have stories, right? Because uh, you know, how do I know I can... Well, it's, it's epistemological problems. So if you live in the... That's why it's very difficult. If you live in the West... It can be extremely difficult to escape the thousand layers of Byzantine webs of control that have been instilled for 2,000 plus years and maintained. It's really, it's, it's, it's a multi-thousand year project. The West, Western civilization, right? Western, Western exceptionalism. And, and there are sub-narratives, but Western, that is a, it is a 2,000 year Plus, a uh, uh, complex, multi-billion person project of maintaining intricate networks of disinformation. It's like, ima imagine an entire the school system, the university, but, but much bigger than that. Everything that you think you know, all of reality, consensus, reality, history, and everything, is being constructed for th millennia. And it's being held in place. And any time you can't do anything without even just speaking the language, like I already said, it's very hard because you can't even speak them. That's why speaking Hawaiian and learning things outside of, in, in, in you can't speak the, another language. But if you like, if you learn 
from native peoples and you speak some of the other language and you listen outside of the West, then you can start to get the picture. But inside of it, and certainly if you're in a white suburb, if you're in a white working class suburb or upper class area anywhere in the North America and anywhere in Europe and anywhere in the G7, even in Taiwan, unfortunately, a lot of it, but not all of it, but you know, a lot of it, it's very Americanized. In Japan, as part of that complex, you, 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 if you're looking at sources inside of those places within that power structure, the economic, political, right, you're going to have an incredibly hard time finding any anything because the sources that you can research, right, are all mostly going to be massively compromised. So I mean, so that that's why it's a the 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 the, the project of this. I have I have this whole. I'm thinking of doing this entire video series called de-westernization or accurately accurately not 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 defaming and anti-west anti-white being racist, anti-white racist or something that you which you can't be but you know it's not about defaming the west it's about accurately representing the west the countries within the west accurately representing britain america their thinkers intellectuals i i i've gone over marx Hegel, Montesquieu, Voltaire, you know, Brzezinski, very important, unhidden one. Um, you know, uh, uh, um, Lenin is kind of like doesn't quite count because he's, <laughs> Russia is too, quote unquote, mongoloid to be Western. But, you know, uh, West, the Western world, um, its thinkers, its ideas, its ideologies, its religions, its everything, its economics, its politics, its stories about what the left is, what is socialism, socialism, communism as constructed within the West. All of these have to be examined. And then not necessarily like thrown out completely because they're bad, but they have to like be examined from a non-Western disinformed perspective so that you can, you can, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that everything I say is like 100% true or anything that a person from Africa or Asia says is guaranteed true. But like the, 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 the sources and the stories that they will be in contact with as somebody who has had to suffer the colonial, suffer under the Imperium, right? And who has had to fight by actually, you know, if if capitalism requires right asymmetries of information, is one in the in the the lingo of Wall Street, what they call it is actionable information, which means asymmetrical through time and through quality, right? So like, you don't know that the the good example is you you don't you don't know as the average person, right? The non-capital and information privileged person that COVID-19 is going to be as bad or worse than the Spanish flu in November of 2019. But if you are Bill Gates, if you are a member of the U.S. Senate, like uh, Senators Loeffler and Burr, Democrat and Republican, or if you are another billionaire, uh, well-positioned person, then you have access to that information. But if, you, if, you, if you're just an average Joe looking at your 401k going, why did it cut in half in 08, 09? And then am I going to lose more money in this pandemic? And then you're investing in all the wrong things that you're being met, led to like a lamb to slaughter. Right. So the point is that like um, you, you, it doesn't mean that you can trust anything that a native Hawaiian says just out of hand. You shouldn't, you should do your own research. Don't do it in the Western world. If you can, you can research it in Vietnam. <laughs> I mean, that's hard, but that's, that's, that's part, that's how they keep you walled in. Because you only have one luna oil, you can't get access like, easily to the Vietnamese take on COVID nineteen in November, January twenty twenty. Right? If if every American could have gotten access to the Chinese and Vietnamese actual narratives, just just some Chinese or Vietnamese person telling you this is what we're doing, this is how it's going, right? In a socialist country, in a non Western country, Americans would have all been spared probably millions of lives and huge suffering because they would have masked early, they would have done a lot more they would have taken it more they might have taken it more seriously right but you don't have access to them because there's a there's a there's a great firewall there's a great wall of western propaganda and your own racism and your own xenophobia that they the west has installed in you not to not to not because a chinese might brainwash you but because they've to keep you brainwashed and stop the chinese from educating you so they go, I'm not listening to you. You're a CCP, you're a CCP insect and, and you're just here to blow up my country. A, a white woman like murdered an uh, Asian on a bus thinking, well, that's saying that's one less Asian that could blow up Canada or can't blow up, blow up our country, right? 
So that's not that's not that's not to defend you from China. That's to defend Western propaganda is not to defend. That's very important. Western propaganda is not there to defend Greece from Persia or Greece from uh, 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 India or Greece from Asia. It was not there. The Western propaganda is not to defend Britain from Africa, is or Britain from Russia. It's not there to defend uh, or Germany. You know, BBC. Is the, the, the American propaganda about China is not there to defend Americans from China invasion. The Western propaganda is to defend Americans from getting educated, and 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 then stopping their own demise under their own leaders. And getting educated from outside of America. That's what Western propaganda is. So you don't listen to anybody who has an education that isn't a white person and doesn't speak fluent English. Making fun of other people's accents is instilled, right? Oh, you fit you ching chong, you talk funny. Oh, you Hawaii, you sound all silly. The rate racism uh, uh, and disregarding non white people, their accents, their clothes. Oh, your hair is unprofessional, so I don't listen to your black voice. Oh, you're black. Well, I shouldn't listen to you because you're, in, you know. You know, you came from a broken home and you're from the ghetto and you're not smart because you sound funny. Installing race, you know, so we don't learn, the, you know, the truth about the United States uh, until it's too late. Installing racism and bigotry and stereotyping is there to stop the people of the West from ever learning anything and undoing their own diseducation and mass propagandizing. Right. So people often say, like, you know, you listen to a non-Western person talk and be like, oh, my God, the United States is the most propagandized place in the world. And Americans hear that. And I think Westerners and Europe is also right behind them, by the way. So don't don't think you're off the hook. You're like, oh, yeah, you know. And then that's it. And then you go on with your life. But that's that's the reality. Um, And it's people I think that it's hard to see that until you like I mean, and I say that as somebody who was raised in the Western reality and going Holy shit. I mean, I was raised to be a, a white, but maybe not quite white enough. High, you know, a professional stock trader making economy scream in Africa and South America for the empire. That's literally what I went to school for programming and almost got a job at Goldman Sachs. So that that's that's how bad it was. That's how bad the brainwashing of Native Hawaiians is. Um, some of them join the military and then they go commit war crimes. But the point is that like... Um, the story, the, the 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 storytelling is not there to defend you from anything. The storytelling is to make you commit war crimes, not even for yourself, but for the people that rule you that you don't even realize do. It's all somebody said. You notice that the it's always the free thinkers that speak exactly the same as every. It's all the disproportionately white dude free thinking, freedom of choice having, free speech people who all talk exactly the same. It's because. That you know, right? It's it the it it, it, it it that is about propagandizing people in a so-called free country as a weapon against uh, uh as a weapon to make them sign up for fascism ultimately, which is that like because it propagates very well. Uh, if you if you allow anybody to say anything at any time, the most sweeping narratives, especially in times when capital when, when when the ruling classes of a country are in deep trouble, they resort to that because then, I mean, it's, it's easier to maintain control and it's more, it can be more profitable to maintain control if your imperium is maybe not quite as degenerate, collapsing as Germany circa 1930s, right? Or US uh, uh, circa now, right? And then when they, when they really start pushing into the fascism is when things are totally falling apart. But when things are more together, then you don't have to then you then then the, then then bringing out the 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 last story of fascism is not as important and the free speech and all stuff comes out along with that because you need that uh, as you go full mask off but anyways so but it, it that each one of those is still some kind of storytelling right each one of those is still just another uh, it is another layer of propaganda anyway I feel like I've been going on for a while it's already two so I should probably get off but um. I, I want to quickly show you really uh, fast. The, no, not that one. Where's my Greece and Rome one? Uh, I lost it. I had it. Here it is. Yeah. So just 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 some just some just some information about when I talk about uh, Alexander the Great never brought civilization anywhere because Greece didn't bring anything anywhere except death and genocide and barbarism. In fact, in fact, I would argue that a lot of the most despotic, uh, the, a lot of the most uh, imperial 
um, brutal regimes in Asia are the places that Alexander conquered and installed Greekism, right? And then, and then, uh, or, or, or Alexander went to war in, you know, and brought slavery too. In fact, okay. But here's a quote. Here's uh, from uh, a book about the 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 Greeks and the Romans who had capitalism predating the uh, predating the 1800s, which Marx describes. Right? Okay, so both in ancient Athens and ancient Rome, um, are, they are prime examples of two of the world's most first fully functioning capitalist societies. Greeks and Roman societies possess diverse social hierarchies relative to modern capitalist societies, both of which contain elitist class. I mean, okay, sorry, I'm not in the right place. Okay. Um, this is this is from a document called Capitalism in Ancient Rome and Ancient Greece. Uh, and this was actually in reaction to the 0809 financial crisis. Uh, and I went over some of this in a previous Twitch stream, but I just want, I, I want to touch on it a little bit. Um, in 0809, when the financial crisis, many in, when, when many independent firms and investors on Wall Street acquired a variety of high-yield financial instruments in hope of earning large returns on maturity. However, these securities were cons considered risky investments. After the real estate bubble burst, these securities became basically worthless and investors were left holding billions of dollars in toxic debt. The example is not intended to be a moralizing lecture on modern economic crisis, but we observe that men will take on risk uh, or participate in unethical business practices to attempt to enjoy high reward and especially to better their socioeconomic status. So um, now where is that exact, I was trying to find that exact phrase here. Um, this, okay, here it is, yeah. So, if it's political or social status, uh, whether political or social, status was very much reliant on the prospect of obtaining wealth. So this is what I was talking about, wealth worship in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Okay, so um, just as one example, Demosthenes affluence, Demosthenes was another in the time of ancient Greece, right? We're talking about, I, I, I want to talk about Greece because specifically I was talking about Alexander, right? So Alexander is played up as this character who brought civilization and, 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 and you know, "Quote unquote civility, human rights, and quote unquote, um, uh, you know, uh, better ways to all these places." No, obviously the Al Library of Alexandria. That's great, and like lots of information was gathered, um, and that that's fine. But at the same time, the Greeks, uh, you know, that that's like saying, "Well, the CIA has lots of great information that they've accumulated. The British accumulated lots of things inside of their museums, right?" The British have lots of information and uh, artifacts they included in their museums too, right? D did the did the British, uh, you know, and like, it's, of course, you could learn a lot going to a British museum. Do the British deserve all of Africa's heirlooms? Do the British deserve to have all of uh, uh, countless Hawaiian uh, uh, ali'i's kapa cloth and capes and our our, our sacred uh, prized artifacts? Did the do the British get to keep those that they stole, or the Americans? Or the uh, or uh, uh, or the French that they plundered out of the Summer Palace in China? Do they? Do they? No. But that's like I mean, I, the, the, in that sense, like it's terrible that the stuff was destroyed in Alexandria. But the way in which they were gotten is the same way in which the British got their artifacts. The British burned a lot of what was inside of Alexandria because it countermanded a lot of their narrative that they wanted to construct. Or I'm sorry. The, 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 some of the burnings of, I, mean, I forget who exactly it was, but the burnings and like the breaking of the noses off of non-white looking uh, uh, statues from antiquities time in, in, in North Africa and in Greece and Rome is not because, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's for the same reason that a lot of what was burned was burned in uh, places like the Library of Alexandria, because it suggested that well, some of it suggested that there were great non-white peoples that didn't have the skin color. The, the, the things that suggested there were achievements in Asia and Africa that the British and the French and the, the colonials of the European, um, what's called the colonial era. I mean, this is kind of a misnomer because there's always British, the Greeks and the Romans did in colonialism. They had colonies all over Europe and Africa and Asia. But anyways, so, so, so. Demosthenes was one of these people that was in that time of Alexander. There have been several references in historical texts that suggest involvement of Demosthenes in maritime finance. Political figures like Demosthenes seem to have taken on risky investments to improve socioeconomic status. 
Improving Saki's economic status and antiquity meant greater power. Meant greater power. So, for example, uh, uh, Demon's father himself was a bank proprietor involved in making maritime loans. Demesne's father employed banks as intermediaries for deposits utilized for maritime loans. The two sons appear to have continued their father's practices. A demon, possibly a banker, may in any event have utilized bank funds in maritime loans even more than his businessman father. The Mezzanese would have needed intermediaries in making the maritime loans attributed to him by Hyperides. If, so the Mezzanese was involved with lending to maritime merchants and ship owners in an attempt to earn hefty returns on capital like his father. Where did the Mezzanese accumulate the vast aqu quantities of capital to begin with? Number one, slaves. Underpaid, exploited labor within Greece, producing uh, agricultural products, produce mining or producing, uh, uh, you know, wine or whatever else. Demesthenes was nobility and also it was in that sense feudal in the sense of having entitlement, but also capital elite. So, I mean, and this is part of my argument that this, the idea of the feudalism and capitalism being two separate systems is, is they're really two sides of a Western barbarian coin. So the mass exploitation, and then on top of that, the conquest of Greece, much like Rome, which brought huge influxes of slaves and brought influxes of resources taken from those other places, flowing into places like Athens, right? In the same way that huge resources flowed into Rome. And then that resources that were accumulated were then reinvested into toxic subprime maritime loans. Because why? Because, right, not unlike Wall Street investing right billions and dollars into toxic subprime no income no jobs no assets loans to uh applebee's waitress to buy a californian mcmansion or a floridian uh, uh 1.5 million dollar uh, uh, piece of real estate right it's the same thing and then the romans did basically that so taking the in plunder based on exploitation slavery all war, militarism same thing Hup centering that and then making risky loan the risky but but uh, because a boat that was going to sail through the mediterranean had a 50 50 chance in 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 the time of octoros that they, they go into that later in the time of great risk right it was a time of um let me see if i can find that um yeah merchants sailing from athens to purchase mende or skione 3,000 containers of mendian wine intended as collateral security for a loan of 3,000 so 3,000 drachma so uh 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 from option, the borrowers are authorized to proceed as far north as the western coast of the Black Sea or uh, as Baristhenes. So this is the actual terms of a loan, right? A risky financial product, right? A collateralized maritime obligation of a Greek capitalist oligarch at the, in, 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 in so-called Alexander the Great's time. So-called Great Alexander. The borrowers also had the option to avoid Pontic area commenced before the rise of Octoros mid-September, but otherwise, without regard to the course chosen or the time required then lenders were to receive their fixed yield of 675 drachma to be paid in addition to the principal within days. And this is all financial wonkery. But you know, if you ever, if you ever been a mortgage, if you have ever been a regional banking mortgage origination officer, if you ever had to apply for a home, a home loan on a house, if you know what, uh, uh, no interest, zero money down, uh, um, you know, uh, four, you know, 4% APR financing, if you know what any of those terms mean, or even if you don't, doesn't matter. You lived in a capitalist America with high, so-called financial innovation post 2000, but it really wasn't. The West, the Westerners, what they do is they, if they can, they plagiarize their own barbaric ancestors, like the Greek bankers, capitalist slash feudalist slash slave owning bankers. And then they redo what they just did but they change it up a little bit. So instead of securitizing subprime mortgages, or so instead of securitizing maritime loans, right? Because fun fact, Arcturus, which is uh, the 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 the, uh, the bear star, is the Arcturus. Arcturus is also equivalent to Hokulea. It's actually the same star when it's at a zenith point in in Hawaii. You actually, when you're doing a Hawaiian um, and Pacific Islander, like you know, in like the movie Moana, Hawaiian uh, maritime navigation, Hawaiian I'm sorry, Hawaiian uh, wayfinding using only the stars, the weather patterns, and the ocean with this, the, the most advanced system of navigation the world has ever seen, which brought the Pacific Island Austronesian people to every corner of the earth, basically. All the way from Africa, a, all over Asia to Turtle Island, across the uh, the majority of the earth's surface we, we, we visited, 
thousands of years ago. Anyway, but Arcturus is the same star, but when the star is in ascendance in Greece, it means it's a time of nightmares and, and damage and great storms that can wreck ships. So anyways, so, and so it's kind of, I mean, anyway. So in Hawaii, it's a star of gladness and prosperity. But when the star rises over Athens, it's nightmares and barbarism and plunder and destruction and collateralized debt obligations and global, global, global Athenian financial crises. Because why? Because it's a risky investment. Anyway, so but the but the but the capitalists of ancient Athens didn't care, just as the capitalists of America's Wall Street don't care, right? Because what mattered was what accumulation of more wealth, based on based the uh, whose primitive accumulation in a Marxian sense, right, is based upon exploitation of masses, and then taking that accumulation and then leveraging it greater and greater to then uh, uh, ideally gain more political and social status. And higher titles. Fun fact: you could literally buy titles throughout the feudal history. So this, the differential between feudalism and capitalism. In, for example, in France, it was the norm that you could buy a judgeship. So like literally, the judge who would. Uh, I found this by reading Chinese history, by the way, not 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 Western history, uh, from a Chinese site. <laughs> uh, if you were having a court case, you the the uh, uh, a wealthy French or British or other European lord could purchase the, the 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 position of the judge by the judgeship right and all litigation so you could literally buy the entire court so what what is justice and what is what is civility when you can literally buy you know yourself out of jail free card right literally that's i would call that court capitalism like it's like judge judy if you could just like buy her like literally just like you could, you know, imagine watching Ali McBeal and Ali McBeal makes this amazing case. And then, you know, Jeff Bezos just like buys the entire court and puts someone else in power. Right. So you could buy titles. And in fact, purchasing judgeships because all all courts were based on how much all all salaries of the court. The judge himself was paid based on the the payments from the litigants. So the, the, the concept of justice coming out of the West is nonsensical. That was stolen from China. Actually, had publicly funded, completely uh, decorrupted court system. Uh, with with the, 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 the what you think of as justice is not anyway. I could go on this forever. It's amazing amounts of disinformation. What all of the courtroom theater and drama is based on Asian court system that the West had no concept of. Literally, bribery was just the norm. You just everything was bribery. So if you were a peasant or commoner, anything that wasn't wealthy, even 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 post feudalism. Do this very second. If you're poor, try going to win a court case against a rich white man. You ever, you ever, you ever want a court case? Try being a native Hawaiian and win a court case against the United States military that's poisoning my water. Not even, not even on the table, is it? No, there's no such thing as justice in the West. But anyway, so, so my point is, why, why am I jumping all over the place? Because the, 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 the system of titles was a system underneath capital. And it worked with feudal aristocratic privilege, but it also you could live with wealth in France in the 1700s and with wealth in Greece in the so-called democracy of the, uh, you know, uh, 2000 years ago. The wealth accumulated social and political power in the same way that wealth in France could buy you titles and buying a judgeship, putting your cousin in charge of a court who would then be collecting huge fees from rival lords trying to buy and bribe the judge off was an investment. Let me say that again. In the same way that Bill Gates would buy, right, millions of acres of American property. Resident, he's the biggest landowner, right? He's the biggest landlord, Bill Gates. So that he could invest in the increasing property values under uh, uh, a, a collapsing uh, Western imperial structure as, as the property and speculating on the property prices of real estate in Michigan or some suburb in California or wherever Bill Gates brought, right? In France, you could do capitalism by buying courts and then it, as an investment and as, as people would pay the judge to bribe the judge to get their rich French ass out of jail free card, what is justice? What is justice in Europe? In the U.S., right? Nothing. It's a, it's a laughable word. Another word that means nothing in the West. But so a, a noble could buy a court and 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 profit from the payments that the corrupt court was paying to the judge. 
as it, as literally as a as a method under feudalism to increase your money to buy more courts. So think about that. So anyway, my, my point is that I mean that so that innovation one of these days soon the United States is going to look back at their European feudal again there's no such thing as feudal feudalism and capitalism it's just Western barbarism. America is going to look back at its feudal ancestors in France and sell off all the courts as investments, right? Probably when people start like burning shit down and then like the the the, the, the oligarchies are just like uh, you know just having to. You know, uh, uh, they, they, they when they run out of uh, digital IP because the Chinese have, you know, 50 quintillion times faster quantum supercomputers, artificial intelligence that makes their uh, DC and uh, and Pentagon, you know, hells look like kindergarten. They already do, by the way. And then when they run out of things to plunder, they're going to start auctioning off their courts because that's what Europe did. Was they literally made money selling the entire court. So, um, but anyway, I, I could, I, I have infinite amounts of this, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop. Um, my most, if you want to learn more about, uh, I'm going to try to upload that, but I was going through this, uh, there's a lot of information if you look it up, but, um, one of these sites, uh, just on the, the last one I talked about with the court system was in, uh, uh, China mirror. Let me see if I can find that. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh yeah, here. So. Uh, th 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 this was a lot of fun. This every one of these is, is very interesting. This is just the tip of the. This is the tip of a in, 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 in immense galaxy sized iceberg. Okay, um, homicide and law and read this entire thing if you want to be very entertained. <laughs> um, uh, the, the 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 Chinese had entire systems of law thousands of years ago that actually functioned, and all courtroom dramas. Are the West pretending to have justice? They still don't have justice. Otherwise, 31 million people wouldn't have burned the fucking United States down. China has had that system for thousands of years, uh, and uh, uh, the the Europeans wrote books about the Chinese justice system, and Europeans were had their books burned and were exiled from their countries. Uh, let me say that again: Europeans who wrote about the Chinese justice system had their books burned, banned from writing. And then exiled from the country just for right multiple multiple, just for writing about the Chinese justice system. Again, you you're not being protected from China. You know the the, the West is trying to protect protect you from learning the truth so that you don't demand justice. Anyways, okay, I could go on this forever. I gotta stop. Sorry too. So thanks a lot. But you know, uh, I could go. But you know, the point is that yeah, you, I think you get the point. I, I, every time I say the point, I'm gonna go on for another twenty minutes. But so East-West relations, oligarchic warmongers, um, and uh, you know, just and to bring it to current events. I mean, I, I could, I could, uh, just just because I wanted to sh show this one thing: anti-Asian racism. Um, how does this apply to you know, anti-Asian racism is such a massive topic. We could spend you know a long time just on that, just in the modern time. But um, a 56-year-old woman. I mean, all what does all this culminate in? What does all this culminate in? Well, one of the things that culminates in is. Uh, the, the West's attempt to subjugate and stop China and stop the East and stop the non-West is uh, the propaganda, the war propaganda, as it did, as 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 Alex Alexander and Aristotle was a war propagandist. Ale Alexander was the CIA. Uh, sorry, Aristotle was the CIA of 300 BC, and then Alexander was the general, right? Alexander was Mark Milley waging attempted war on Asia on bogus bogus grounds and Aristotle was the New York Times propagandist going this is why we should do it all, all based on falsehood anyways 50 anti-Chinese scene in the US 56 year old woman stabbed in a teen girl 56 year old woman stabbed a teen girl in the head multiple times on an Indiana bus for being Chinese according to affidavit the video footage reviewed by police showed no interaction between the woman prior to attack. And and somebody cold tweeted that one. Where is that one? The um what was most what was most kind of horrifying was what that late what the woman actually said about um shoot, where was that one? Somebody somebody quoted it with what, what the woman actually said. And it was really it was really disgusting. Um uh crap, I can't find it. Anyways, but basically, uh, the, the, the lady who stabbed the Chinese woman said that um, that's one less Chinese that could blow up our country. So she literally, like, you, anyway, 
So that that that's the level of. I mean, it's just it's just it's just it it got really bad in 2020. It still is bad, and it's gonna get worse, unfortunately. And I don't have time to go into all of the geopolitics of this moment. But you, if you read the news about what the with the militarization of Japan, militarization in Korea, Okinawa. Japanese are gonna like uh, uh, the UK and Japan are British soldiers are being deployed to Japan, the US and they're building bases, they're building nuclear weapons in South Korea. The US uh, and the West are going, they're going, they're going full Alexander. You know what I'm saying? They're going full Alexander. And I, I this is no shade. I'm not trying to throw shade at Colin Farrell's acting. It's actually very funny. He has an Irish accent the whole fucking time. This is, I could just talk, I could just do a comedic stream about how funny this show is, but. Uh, he said, "I." He's like, "It's." I, I keep listening to. I keep listening to Colin Farrell. He's like, "It's my island." He's like, "You know, you know, hoity toity potatoes. We're coming. we I'm like, I'm like Colin Farrell. How is Alexander gonna raid uh China from Ireland? You get this cool. You got this little island. You're way. You're too far. <laughs> it's funny because like the whole time he's got this Irish accent. Anyway, um, but." Th- the West is going full Alexander. It wants to go and Western propagandize itself and try to seize the East. And this is tragically, massively mistaken. And the victims, the, the people that are going to suffer are Asians, as they have, as they get attacked. And, and But also the people in the West are going to suffer as all your money. It's already been spent on Ukraine. And anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, we'll talk about that more later on, but I got to go. So... Sign up for Silver Spook University by becoming a Silver Spook Patreon patron. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, uh, and thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot to uh, 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 Holly for moderating. And yeah, don't forget. And thanks a lot for Strain for hopping in there. Don't forget, if you become a Patreon patron, you get access to Silver Spook University. A lot of the things that I'm kind of just touching on or I'm jumping around. Uh, I, I go more into a lot of those things in the, the Silver Spook, uh, as I showed you, the Silver Spook uh Silver Spook University, that has like it is a it is a massive, uh, uh, it is this is the true archive of Alexandria, okay. This is like all of the information of the world compiled as best as I can manage it, de Western disinformationized as much as I possibly can. It's not perfect because I'm not a perfect human. I'm just like speak English fluently, <laughs> but I'm trying my best. So if you want access to, but this is all my content uh, categorized by place. Uh, like Hawaiian history, uh, uh, centering Africa, centering Asia, centering Pacific Turtle Island, centering science fiction, talking about race and gender, and then and, and it's it's got all of my threads plus all of the videos uh, in a more easily consumable and searchable way. If you want to learn about a specific topic, you can go to that. So consider, and this is a reward for becoming a uh, Patreon uh, of any level. Um, it just it's really you know you can access it. It's not like I'm like, it's not like it's top secret or something, something, but it's just like, just to support us to continue doing this educational work that we try to do, right? Because it does take time and energy uh, and we have to pay electricity. We have to keep the lights on. And so we really need the support of uh, everybody who can afford to give it to throw us some five or $10 a month. And then you get access to Silver Spook University and you also get access to Silver Spook Discord and you also get access to uh, uh, behind the scenes updates and all kind of other fun stuff. And you also get to know that you're actually part of the uh, solution fighting the actual struggle against the uh, uh, actual empire and decolonization in Hawaii and helping Native Hawaiians do land back here. Uh, didn't talk much about Hawaii. Maybe I'll do some of that later. But support us at patreon.com slash neofeud and also consider supporting us through a Ko-Fi if, donation if you can afford that um, If you don't, and if you don't want to use Patreon. At Silver Spoon Games at Octodon.social, you can follow. And at Silver Spoon Games at Mastodon.social on Twitter. Uh, oh, and yeah, don't forget, of course, you can get the games like Neofeud. Neofeud is a game, and so um, and so when I talk about Neofeud, it's an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, anti-racist, cyberpunk adventure game. But um, some of that stuff I was talking about was trying to really... When I talked about how feudalism, cap, Western feudalism and Western capitalism are really two sides of the same coin, that was part of the point of Neofeud, the game that I made. Uh, right about five six years ago and it is, it is a so it's a it's a game but it's also education everything i do is again i'm trying to do a lot of things all at once uh, um which sometimes results in my own headaches and sometimes people don't understand what i'm saying but also um 
Neo Feud is a game that I want to be fun and entertaining, but also educational, right? And uh, it's uh, if you can leave even a very short review, it is it is also uh, greatly appreciated. You can also get games on itch.io for Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux. If you like getting games on the itch, you can get Neo Feud uh, for uh, and uh, it's on sale. And you can also get Decolonators. If speaking of stop Asian hate, if you want to stop Asian hate, this is a game. That's all about stopping Asian hate. You know what I'm saying? It's called militarily kicking capitalists and colonizers' butts out of your sovereign Asian country, and then just kicking their ass. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's Decolonators. <laughs> uh, it's a video game, and it's also a retro contra style game. That if you like those, and and y'all, you, you you want your video games with like a hefty side of actually based politics, not none of this imperialist, you know, or or or, or lib bullshit, you know. You get you get yourself decolonators, okay? Um, also, you can get Indigestar Star is a game about um, it is a game when an empire arrives on your planet to eradicate and plunder. You must heal the land of people, prevent erasure of your native language and culture, confront invaders before it is too late. Oh, and also, I should I have, I definitely got to give this a shout out because uh, Pigeonwick Gun is a game where you uh, you you fight uh, giant robot gajillionaires, bougie gentrifying F sixteen pilots, heart stealing lion liberal politicians, and tons of corporate owned cops. Uh, and this is a game that is set in the world of the lounge. And uh, uh, I am actually in the most recent episode of the lounge. And so you should, I'm going to do this real quick because there, there's another, the lounge is a Twitch stream variety show. Uh, it's a very fun and entertaining music and storytelling and mischief. Um, and it's like a Muppets show. But much more weird and interesting, and we can't. We're still trying to think of a good way to describe that in one sentence. But um, the lounge will be featuring. We'll be having another a uh, 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 show this coming up this week, and Holly will have the exact date. Is it Tuesday? I think it's. I think it's this Tuesday. But Holly will have the exact date, and um, I am in the show. So um, so if you want to, if you want, if you want to see me. And and pigeon with the gun, pigeon with gun is the game set in the, the, the in the lore of the show, so be sure to tune in to uh, the next episode. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to find I'm trying to find I I, I can't find a picture of myself. But anyways, I, I literally I make a video appearance in it uh, as the uh, one of the winners uh, one, one one of the cast of a game that is qualified for best dude ever or best dude ever who made pigeon with gun. And I have to give my I give a little speech in there. And anyway, so consider following uh, both Kate and Holly. Holly at the Tech Fairy uh, is my partner, uh, voice actor, partner, producer, writer, and moderator for the show The Lounge. Uh, also, is primary caregiver, parent, and educator here at the Silver Spoon Cooperative, as well as uh, tweeting important stuff like this. Um, and uh, um, so I'm all out of order now. So. <laughs> You can also get, of course, Woman is a book by Holly that is about a woman or by a woman raised in right-wing evangelical Protestant Christianity. And it is about critiquing that culture. And it uh, uh, is about, it's, it's a book from the perspective of Mary and the uh, story within the Bible, but that is about critiquing this uh, Western culture, let's say. Uh, and so also that is free or you can give us any amount of money when you pick it up. And um, of course, you can always follow me. If you don't want to join Silver Spook University, shame on you. Why don't you want to join Silver Spook University? But number two, <laughs> you don't want to join. So you can also follow at Silver Spook Guy, and you get basically what I'm saying, like in real time. However, it comes out. Um, uh, you can also follow at Silver Spook on Instagram and Facebook, and Silver Spook Games for the game stuff on on Twitter. And then you can also follow Terminus C. Terminus Terminus C uh, is the social media account for Terminus Cyberstar. That is a cyberpunk RPG like Deus Ex, System Shock, or uh, Cyberpunk 2077 sort of game. But it is like a smaller game that I am the content director and writer on with my sort of angle on things as usual. And so if you want to follow that game, you can follow this game uh, at Terminus C and you can join their Discord. And uh, yeah, it is a game that's uh, nearly completed and... Looking forward to playing it soon. Just waiting for them to finish it up. But anyway, I don't want to rush anybody because there's no. I don't. I would never. I would never. Cr I would never do video game crunch. And if you know what that is, you know what that is. It's not good. Um. 
So thank you. Thanks everybody for watching and um uh, thank you to the Patreon patrons for your support. Uh, as always, massively appreciated. Um sorry, I gotta turn something is something is not quite right here. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So yeah, thanks to all the Patreon patrons. Um we'll be back again. We'll be back again in the evening to uh hang out again and um oh i'm gonna having a birthday event next week so next week i have five i think we're gonna be on twitch so next week f five sorry what is that one two four seven seven p.m eastern saturday seven p.m eastern saturday or five p.m pacific saturday next week we're gonna have a silver spook birthday stream so look look out for that. Unless I got the, I'm pretty sure I got that correct, but I'll, I'll double check. So, anyways, thanks to the Patreon patrons, and um, look forward to uh, uh, seeing everyone for the birthday stream. Keep your marriage safe, polished, be excellent to each other, and uh, you know, I mean, Alexander is actually the. I didn't talk about the movie that much, but you know, I didn't really want to talk about the movie too much. Uh, but uh, you know, it's not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie as, as far as it goes. But also, you know, we got to undo some of this Western propaganda for 3 to 2000 years. So, have a good one.